Welcome to the third rewriting Naruto movie. This video right here is the compilation of parts 11 through 17 of my rewriting Naruto series, where I rewrite Naruto making changes to improve the story from a personal taste. Subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the series and want to see more, like this video to support it and make sure that it spreads out around the YouTube algorithm, and let's get going with the video. We begin the Tenchi Bridge arc. This is one of my least favorite Naruto arcs, so expect plenty of changes in this one. The arc begins the same way, with Tsunade, Sakura, and Shizune discussing the mission and the possibility of Sasori telling them about the spy being an Akatsuki trap. Naruto appears and tells them that they should find new members for the squad because Kakashi is in the hospital for overusing Kamui, and then Naruto goes to the village looking for possible squad mates like in the original series. Naruto meets Kiba and Shino for the first time after he returned to the village, and their interaction goes goes the same way. They say they have a mission with Kurenai, so they can't join Naruto and Sakura in their mission. However, in the original, Naruto meets Hinata here for the first time, right after he meets Shino and Kiba, but Naruto has already met Hinata before in the rewrite, and she is not going in missions with Team Kurenai, so this scene is gonna be completely cut out. I also never really liked that Hinata faints right away after she sees Naruto for the first time in Shippuden, so yeah, just leave this out. Normally after that, Naruto would meet Team Asuma, but I'm changing the order of some scenes here. We'll first get the scene when Tsunade speaks to the elders of the village when they are trying to make Naruto stay in the village and not go on missions, but Tsunade sticks her neck out for Naruto and ensures that Naruto is able to go on missions. Danzo then arrives, like in the original as well, and they have the same interaction. However, when Danzo says he will assign a member from the root Anbu to Naruto's squad, Tsunade vehemently denies him that in the rewrite and says that she is the Hokage and she has the authority to decide on those matters. Danzo scoffs at that and leaves. After that scene, we cut to Tsunade's office and she will assign Yamato his mission as team captain of Team Kakashi. In the rewrite, Yamato will be a very different character though. For starters, he will be much younger, about 19 years old, and he'll also be pretty handsome with long hair he wears his headband to the side in a more laid-back, cool way, but he'll still be an Anbu member, and when Tsunade assigns his mission, he will be annoyed and kinda scoff at Tsunade, making it seem that he didn't really want to do that, but he has to do it because the Hokage told him to. Yamato will be a fusion of Yamato himself and Sai in this rewrite. Sai will not exist in the rewrite. His character is completely useless for the story as a whole, he never does anything relevant, or receives any significant development in the entire narrative. I also don't like this trope of the character having no emotions, so he has to discover them. Sai has always been very boring to me, a character without a purpose. I could try to improve the character, but taking him out will actually allow me more time to develop much more important and interesting characters that should receive more of a spotlight, and you'll see what I'm talking about quite soon. Removing Sai from this arc takes away the mystery component, but it adds in character development and growth, which I think is much more important. And let's be real, after this arc, Sai is completely inconsequential throughout the entire story. Yamato in the original series is also a pretty boring character as well. He never gets a lot of development, so I am changing things up here. I never thought his personality was very interesting either, so I'm actually trying to make him more distinct. And when I mentioned that he's going to be a fusion of Yamato himself and Sai, I meant that he will have Yamato's powers, but physically resembles Sai much more than the actual Yamato. However, he will have emotions unlike Sai. He will be very cocky and arrogant, especially towards Naruto because he is actually pretty racist against Naruto because of the Nine Tails Jinchuriki condition. He will be making the same Naruto micro penis jokes like Sai did in the original, but while Sai made those jokes because he didn't know how to interact with people and had no clue of what could be offensive, Yamato will make those jokes towards Naruto because he's a jerk and he kinda hates him. We cut to Naruto as he meets Shikamaru and then Choji. He asks if they could join his mission, but they can't, as they are all busy as well. They're then attacked, not by a lion made out of ink, as it happened in the original, but by a water lion. Choji punches it and destroys the lion. Naruto looks up at the rooftop and he sees Yamato standing 
happening there instead of Sai. Yamato produces more water lions as Naruto rushes towards him, trailed by Shikamaru's shadow as a support. Shikamaru takes out the water lions with piercing shadows and Naruto clashes his kunai with Yamato's. Naruto screams, who the hell are you? Yamato says, So this is the extent of your power, Nine Tails? It's as small as your package. Naruto gets very pissed at that. Shikamaru's shadow reaches them on the rooftop and Yamato jumps out of its range. Yamato then weaves hand size mid-air, water style, aquatic disc. He spits a spinning disc of water towards Naruto, who was flustered by Yamato's comment and doesn't react in time. The water disc shoots towards him. Gentle fish! Air palm! Compressed air hits the water disc, which explodes into countless water droplets. Naruto looks to the side. He sees Hinata, who appeared out of nowhere, her Byakugan activated, looking at Yamato with anger and determination. Naruto smiles as he sees that. Yamato smirks. Oh, the Byakugan princess has showed up. You are as pretty as they say. He winks at Hinata. Her expression is completely unchanged. Changed. She says, Who do you think you are attacking Naruto out of nowhere? Yamato says, Don't be so angry, princess. You'll ruin that perfect face. Naruto screams, Enough, you jerk! I'm ending you right now! Yamato smiles in contempt. Another Hinata appears out of nowhere behind Yamato and strikes him with a powerful gentle fist blow, making him explode into pieces of wood. The Hinata who showed up first and used the air palm disappears in a cloud of smoke. It was a shadow clone. The Hinata who struck Yamato down says, He was a clone too, huh? And I can't see his real body with my Byakugan. He's probably far away. We cut to Yamato inside of his own house. He seems a little pissed and thinks, damn it, the little princess interrupted me. I had to assert my dominance before I took over the Nine Tails team and now, well, I guess I'll have to do it the hard way. How the hell did she do that even? She snuck up on me twice. Luckily, I used the wood clone, otherwise that gentle fist would have been nasty. He smirks to himself and says to no one, oh, whatever. I do like angry women anyway. We cut to Naruto and Hinata on the roof Top. Choji Shikamaru and Ino, who just arrived, jump up the rooftop and inquire about what happened. Naruto and Hinata explain the situation and Team Asuma doesn't know who Yamato was. Naruto then says to Hinata in excitement, Hinata! You know the Shadow Clone Jutsu? Yeah, I learned it. I'm not nearly as good at it as you are, though. I'm sorry, I didn't want to copy you or anything, Naruto. Naruto smiles. That's awesome! The only other people I've seen doing that Jutsu were Jonins! You're amazing! Hinata blushes. Ino says, smiling. Of course she is, Hinata's incredibly talented. Naruto then has a brilliant idea. Hinata, I need you to come with us to our top secret mission. It would be amazing if we had you. You just took that guy down like it was nothing. Hinata blushes furiously now. Shikamaru says, I think you're out of luck, Naruto. Hinata's always busy with her duties to her clan. She hasn't gone on an official mission in years. Hinata, still blushing, says louder than anyone would expect her to speak. I'll go. Team Asu is very surprised. Naruto smiles at her, blushing as well. Well then, we just have to convince Granny Tsunade now. We cut to Tsunade's office. Naruto is trying to persuade her into letting Hinata on the mission. Come on, Granny Tsunade. Hinata's a great Kanoichi. She'll be great for our team. Hinata is quiet and blushing. Tsunade seems conflicted and hesitant. She says, Hinata, why do you want to start going on missions again all of a sudden? You told me you wanted to focus on your clan's affairs. That's true but Naruto asked me personally and I really want to be there to protect him if he needs to be protected. Are you sure about that? Aren't you a little rusty, Hinata? I've been training every day, Lady Fifth. I assure you I'll be useful to the mission. Sakura is watching the exchange in Tsunade's office. She's not saying anything, but she is looking at Naruto, suspecting of something. Tsunade says, Well, this mission will involve a lot of reconnaissance, and I can't think of anyone better to do that than a member of the Hugo clan. Very well, Hinata, you will join Team Kakashi for their next mission. Also, I've already chosen your new captain. He's very capable and I'll send you to meet him now. Naruto, Hinata and Sakura set out to meet their new captain. When they find out it's Yamato, Naruto is visibly pissed and Hinata has a very cold expression. Yamato is smirking at them. He says, well then, it's great to have you on board as well, Byakugan princess. I am Yamato. You're 
your new captain. Naruto screams at him. Who do you think you are attacking people in the middle of the street? Sakura says, calm down Naruto, he's our superior. Yamato says, I just wanted to test the abilities of the Nine Tails. I was quite disappointed actually. Hinata and Sakura glare at Yamato. He says, my my, so the Nine Tails actually has friends. I see the rumors were correct. I think you were just a hoax. You brainwashed your friends into liking you. And now you're brainwashing them into going after that Uchiha criminal. Those demonic powers of the Nine Tails surround you for sure. Naruto is visibly angry. Sakura dashes towards Yamato, readying a punch. Hinata gets on her way, saying, Wait, Sakura, we can't disrupt the mission because of him. It's too important. Sakura stops, and Yamato says, You are as beautiful as you are wise. Byakugan princess. Naruto screams, Stop calling her that, you creep! Oh, well, just because your package is small, that doesn't mean you have to scream all the time to compensate, Nine Tails. Hinata and Sakura glare at him again, even more. Well, let's begin. Yamato then explains their mission like in the original series, but he's also going to add something else that was not present in the original series, but that I think is very important for the stakes of this mission. He will tell Team seven that their mission is going to be in another nation and generally they're not allowed to go on other nations if they're not asked to or if they don't get permission from that nation However, this mission is very much an important mission and therefore asking for permission and having the possibility of getting denied is just not acceptable. That's why the mission will have to be very covert and once they cross the border of the Land of Fire, they'll have to act in stealth. Yamato explains that the mission is going to be in the country of Grass and they have a shinobi village there, the Grass Village, which the ninjas in Team 7 are somewhat familiar with but they should expect ninjas to be roaming around as well. And keeping a low profile is going to be very important to avoid any unnecessary conflicts with the country of grass and the land of fire. After explaining that, Yamato tells Team 7 that they have one hour to get ready and reconvene in the main gate so they can leave. Team 7 scatters, Naruto and Sakura walk on the street together and they are discussing how much of a jerk their new captain is. They are both very much in agreement. Sakura says, after that discussion, Sakura says, So Naruto, Hinata is in our team, huh? Yeah, I mean, she's strong, right? For sure, but is that the only reason why you invited her? I don't know what you're talking about. Sure, of course you don't. Just make sure you don't get distracted during our mission. Ah, you hypocrite! You were always mooning over Sasuke during our missions. No one ever told you not to have a crush on him. Aha! So you admit you have a crush on Hinata? I didn't say that! You might as well have. Fine, just don't tell her. Or anyone for that matter. Why? I can help you out. I mean, it's very obvious that she really likes you, Naruto. Don't tell anyone, Sakura. Okay. Your loss, I guess. Sakura goes to Tsunade's office. She tells Tsunade about the incident with Yamato and his general attitude. Tsunade looks frustrated and says, It's that bad, huh? I'm afraid I've already failed to keep that man down. Sakura, I'll need you to keep your temper. Also, try to keep Naruto under control. I cannot send anyone except for Yamato. He's the best man for the job by far. Sakura says, Very well, master. I'll do what I can. Danzo enters the room at that point. They then have the same exchange as they had in the original, except for when Danzo mentioned Sai. In the rewrite, Danzo will say instead, So, you've assigned a girl that hasn't gone on a mission for two years to the team? That pampered heir of the Hyuga? You should have let someone from the roots in the team, Tsunade. It would be tragic to lose such a young, innocent girl on a mission like that. I assure you, Danzo, the shinobi I assigned for the mission are the right ones for the job. Danzo scoffs and says, We shall see. We cut to Naruto who's preparing his ninja gear. He is still angry at Yamato and thinks, He's making fun of my equipment in front of Hinata. I can't let him do that. He ties his headband and sets off. We cut to the underbellies of the Leaf Village now. The Oni masked man is kneeling in front of Danzo. 
who says, The Hokage's decision will work to our advantage. Keep an eye on Naruto Uzumaki and make sure their mission goes without a hitch. We cannot afford to lose the Nine Tails. It will be done, Lord Danzo. Team Kakashi, composed of Naruto, Hinata, Sakura, and Yamato, assemble at the Leaf Village Gate and leave towards the Tenchi Bridge. Team Kakashi just left the Leaf Village for the Tenchi Bridge, which is located in the country of grass. They walk for quite a while without saying a word. The mood in the team is very tense. Naruto, Sakura, and Hinata are all glaring at Yamato. He doesn't seem to care though. He is is smirking. Yamato then finally breaks the silence and says, My my, I can feel the three of you glaring at me. I know I'm handsome, but you're gonna make me blush, Byakugan princess. Naruto says, Why don't you just shut up? Well, because I'm your captain and I'll say whatever I want. Sakura says, I don't know what Lady Tsunade saw in you to assign you the role of captain. Yamato says, I could say the same thing about you. Why would Lady Tsunade take on a pupil without any talent who clearly doesn't have what it takes to be strong. Sakura gets pissed. Naruto says, shut up or I'll make you. Sakura says, trying to calm herself down. Don't mind him, Naruto. He's just a little prick. A little prick is what lies in between the nine tails' legs. Naruto gets furious. You bastard! Tell me, nine tails, how did you convince everyone that you rescued the Kaze Kagi again. How did you make the Sand Village acknowledge your efforts? You must be the greatest con man in the world! Unlike some people, I care about the missions I go on. I care about my friends! Yamato laughs, and Sakura says, I was there, you idiot. Naruto fought the Akatsuki and retrieved the Kazekage. It was probably all Kakashi's doing. After what you displayed in our little altercation, I can see you beating a five-year-old, much less an Akatsuki member. Well, I guess that's why you're still a Ganon. Naruto's fuming. Sakura remembered Tsunade's instructions to keep Naruto calm holds him down, preventing him from from getting closer to Yamato. Hinata is observing everything with a cold expression. Naruto then says, Why are you gloating about that fight anyway? Hinata destroyed you! Well, after I witnessed the beauty of the Byakugan princess firsthand, I was paralyzed by it. When she hit me, that was wonderful. Yamato looks at Hinata and winks at her. Hinata's expression is completely unfazed. Sakura says, You are seriously the worst person I've ever spoken to and I've spoken to a couple of Akatsuki members and Orochimaru. Oh no, I'm definitely not the worst person you've ever spoken to. That honor would most certainly fall upon your former comrade Sasuke Uchiha. Deserting the village that gave him everything? Trying to kill you in the process? Joining Orochimaru, the man who killed the third Hokage? That is the worst person you've ever spoken to. Naruto and Sakura both lose their temper and rush Yamato ready to strike him. Hinata tries to go after them, but before they reach Yamato, he summons his wood cage, trapping the three ninjas there. Yamato sighs. Oh well, I suppose we didn't start off so good. Sakura looks at the wooden cage and thinks, this is wood style, the first Hokage secret jutsu. How does he know that? Who is he? Yamato says, we have a couple of days to get to Tenchi Bridge, so I guess we can do a little bit of team build-up. He smiles in a relaxing hot spring. Naruto says, what the hell? It's either that or you stay in the cage, Nine Tails, for the rest of the day. We cut to the hot springs and Naruto is very embarrassed, trying to hide as much as possible under the water, while Yamato is very relaxed, asserting his dominance. He says, as I suspected, your equipment is is indeed minute. Naruto gets furious, yelling at Yamato. The girls on the other side overhear that. Sakura and Hinata feel embarrassed, but the other random girls in the hot springs laugh at Naruto. Naruto hears them laughing and has a mischievous idea. He remembers the size of Hinata's chest and decides he wants to take a look. Yamato then tells the story about Jiraiya almost getting killed by Tsunade when he tried to do the same thing and Naruto simply freezes in place 
place in fear inside the hot spring water. Yamato leaves, saying he has some stuff to do. Hinata and Sakura seem to be enjoying themselves. Sakura smiling says, So Hinata, what do you think about Naruto? Hinata blushes. What about him? Well, it's been a while since you've been on a mission with him. Yeah, it's very good to have him back. He's a great ninja. Sakura smiles. It's probably good for you to go on more missions sometimes, Hinata. Of course your clan is important, but maybe I could talk to Lady Tsunade and ask you to become a permanent member of Team Kakashi when Kakashi-sensei comes back. I really appreciate that, Sakura, but I don't think I can do this all the time with all my other obligations. Also, I feel like Kurunai-sensei, Kiba, and Shino would feel betrayed. Oh, I see. Well, if you change your mind, definitely tell me. By the way, who do you think Yamato is? He has wood style. That's a very rare jutsu. I've heard rumors about a ninja in the village who had wood style. I didn't think it was gonna be him. But still, I don't know much. Hinata then notices something. She says, Excuse me, Sakura. There's something I must attend to. She wraps a towel around her body and leaves the hot spring. We go to Yamato. He's only wearing a towel as well. And he is standing in the hallway of the hot spring inn with a wide grin on his face. Hinata appears, looking at Yamato. He smiles. Both are only covered by their towels. Yamato says, Princess, great to see you here. Hinata smiles. I know why you brought us here. I can see you staring at me whenever I'm not looking. I can also see you standing here here waiting for me. Wow, you're straightforward. I like that. Well then, if you came here knowing all that, I guess it is my lucky day. Yamato moves close to Hinata. She smiles and touches her hand on Yamato's bare chest. Yamato has a gleeful and arrogant smile on his face. I knew you had good taste, Byakugan princess. Oh yes, I do. She leans in, not aiming for his mouth, but instead for his ear. She then whispers, smiling. I don't care if you hit on me, but the next time you slightly insult Naruto, I'll kill you. Hinata then casually walks away. Yamato is completely frozen in place. He is terrified and thinks, that was an empty threat. She wouldn't hesitate to kill me. I could feel murderous intent oozing out of her. What the hell are these Yugas? I have to be more careful. We cut to the next morning as Team 7 reconvenes to resume their journey to the country of grass. Yamato is no longer smirking all the time like he was before, and he doesn't provoke Naruto whatsoever. He also seems much more nervous whenever he talks to the team, and he says, Today we'll reach the border with the country of grass. Needless to say, you can't let them know we are leaf ninjas as we cross. Sakura says, Are we just sneaking in then? No, the border is a mountain range, difficult to cross and patrolled by several sensory ninjas. There's a great chance they'll spot us and we'll have to fight our way in or they could try to pursue us into the country of grass which would be even more problematic. Our best bet is to slip in as though we're just regular travelers. Naruto says, I don't get it. I thought the country of grass and the land of fire were allies. So what if we're stepping into their territories? They shouldn't be mad at us. Yamato seems annoyed and he's about to say something but then he looks at Hinata who's staring at him with a cold look. Yamato catches himself and says something else instead. The country of grass has never been very open to any foreign nations. What we have with them is much more of a pact of non-aggression than a proper alliance. The land of fire is certainly much more powerful than them, but we shouldn't let them know we're infiltrating their country, lest we create a diplomatic crisis. Naruto sighs in annoyance. I hate politics. Hinata says, but don't you want to become the Hokage, Naruto? You'll have to deal with that type of thing. As Hinata says that, Yamato holds in mocking laughter at the thought of Naruto becoming the Hokage. Naruto says, I suppose I'll have to, but it's so boring. Hinata laughs with tenderness, but Yamato looks annoyed. Sakura then says, so what's gonna be the plan? Yamato says, we'll use the transformation jutsu to pass ourselves as traveling merchants from the land of fire. Our nation trades a lot with them, so it shouldn't be out of the ordinary. Hinata says, if they have sensory types checking people who cross the border, they'll sense our
our chakra right away even if we're transformed. That's where Sakura comes in. I'm going to create a large wooden crate and carry it on my back. Sakura, you'll be inside that crate so you're not seen by any border patrol. When we reach the checkpoint, you'll cast a genjutsu on the ninjas that will be inspecting us and trying to sense our chakra. I'll make small slits around the crate so you can see outside and aim the genjutsu properly. Hinata and Naruto will be transformed by my side. Yamato creates a crate with his wood style. He says, we'll transform here before we leave the inn so we're not spotted as we get closer to the border. Sakura, you'll be traveling in the crate. Sakura seems annoyed at that but enters the crate nonetheless. Yamato picks it up and attaches it to his back. Naruto, Hinata and Yamato then use the transformation jutsu, making themselves look like regular traveling merchants. They then travel towards the border. Yamato seems awfully quiet today, much more reserved and with a timid body language. Naruto then gets closer to Hinata, leaning in and whispers, Hinata, don't you think the captain's a bit nicer today? Hinata shrugs and says, I don't know, maybe the hot springs cleared his head. Team Kakashi then arrives at the border after traveling almost the whole day. It is getting darker now. The crossing used to traverse the border is a narrow passage in the middle of a beautiful mountain range. They see some ninjas from the grass village doing patrol and also some common people coming and going from the border. Yamato says, Hinata, you stay sharp with your Byakugan and tell us if anything weird happens. She nods. Sakura's watching what's happening through the thin slits placed in strategic places around the crate. They get in line for border inspection. Hinata counts seven grass ninjas nearby, but she says none of them seems to be flaring their chakra in an attempt to sense other ninjas or chakra. Their turn to be inspected comes. A grass ninja says, Halt there, what's your business in the country of grass? Yamato says, We're selling our tea. And where do you hail from? The Hizuna outpost in the land of fire. Very well. We'll conduct a brief inspection now. The grass ninja starts weaving hand signs. Sakura begins weaving hand signs at the same time within the crate as she thinks, He's going to use some type of sensor jutsu. I can't let him notice us. The grass ninja finishes his hand sign saying, Ninja art, detect chakra. His eyes start to glow blue with chakra. Sakura casts a genjutsu at the same time, aiming at the sensory grass ninja. Genjutsu! Altered sight! We cut to the grass ninja's POV. He can see faint traces of light coming out of himself and the other grass ninjas he can see doing border patrol. Nothing comes out of the merchants in front of him. He says, Alright, you're clear. Sakura sighs in relief within the crate. Team Kakashi then motions to move into the country of grass, but then they hear a voice. Wait, what's in the box? A large grass ninja with a smile on his face is coming towards the direction. He continues, we can't let them pass without checking if they are bringing what they actually said. Naruto and Yamato tense up. Hinata seems calm though. Sakura thinks, if I use a genjutsu to make him change his mind, that will look too suspicious. The grass ninja is coming towards them, looking straight at Yamato's crate. Sakura sees that through the slit and weaves hand signs, thinking, ninja art, inner self-release. She casts a genjutsu on the grass ninja coming their way. Sakura's inner self Avatar appears behind him. He doesn't seem to notice it though. Sakura's inner self grabs the ninja's calf and squeezes it with mighty strength. The skin and muscles don't cave in because of the squeeze, but the pain caused by the genjutsu is real nonetheless. The grass ninja screams in agony saying, I'm cramping! Help! Help! Please! Someone help! He falls to the ground, grabbing his calf. Sakura's inner self disappears as she releases the genjutsu. Ninjas guarding the border rush to help, and Team Kakashi uses that moment of commotion and distraction to nonchalantly walk into the country of grass. They enter the narrow passage in the middle of the mountains, and once they're far away enough, Naruto smiles and says, Good job, Sakura! Sakura says from inside the crate, her voice muffled, Piece of cake, Naruto! Team Kakashi finally leaves the mountain passage and enters the country of grass proper. Yamato says, let's keep our transformations up just in case. Sakura, I'll let you out once we find a place to stay for the night. Sakura is really annoyed. You better hurry cause I gotta pee! As they near the location of the Tenchi Bridge, Team Kakashi finds a suitable place to stay for the night. Yamato lets Sakura out of the crate and she quickly rushes to the bushes in order to relieve herself. Naruto laughs and tells Hinata, she never did that when Sakura
Sasuke was on the team, Hinata laughs with him. They hear Sakura yelling from within the bushes. I heard that, okay? Yamato creates the same wooden house as he created in the original for them to spend the night. Sakura comes out of the bushes, relieved, and she says, looking at the house, I'll cast a barrier around it so the house looks like a small hill. This should avoid visual detection at least. Sakura does so, making a hologram-like jutsu that surrounds the house and makes it look like an unassuming hill. Hinata says, I'll stay out here for a while, with my Byakugan activated to make sure we weren't followed. Yamato looks at her and says, yeah, that's a good idea. Yamato, Sakura, and Naruto enter the house as Hinata stays outside. Inside the house, they have the same discussion about the mission as they had in the original, where Yamato debriefs the team about what they have to do. After they finish the discussion, Hinata enters the house. She says, it appears we haven't been followed. Naruto smiles and says, nice, we're clear. Sakura says, don't let your guard down just yet, Naruto, we're in enemy territory. Yamato then realizes Hinata didn't listen to the briefing and says, pretty annoyed to Sakura and Naruto, you too, brief Hinata on the mission cause I'm going to bed. He then stands up and goes to his room. Naruto is actually pretty happy at that as they got rid of Yamato and he can talk to Hinata about the mission for quite some time. Sakura and him then brief her about Yamato's instructions and Hinata nods in understanding after they finish explaining. She then says, oh this shouldn't be too difficult, I can perceive things well with my Byakugan, I'll be able to spot the spy coming way before they arrive. Naruto smiles and says, it must be nice to have a Byakugan and to think that you'll command the Hyuga clan one day. Hinata blushes and says, I suppose yeah, one day. Hopefully not soon. But why? Because I will only become the head of the Hyuga clan when my father dies. Naruto is surprised, but he understands that logic. Still. You're already a big deal in the Leaf Village, Hinata. She blushes even more. Sakura sees that they are both having a very good flow of conversation. She then fakes a yawn and says, Alright, I'm going to bed, leaving Naruto and Hinata alone. They both become very self-conscious after this, looking at each other in awkward silence. Naruto finally says, So, Hinata, have you been training with Neji? Um, actually, it's been a while since we trained together. I see. <laughs> <laughs> you probably already surpass him, believe it! Hinata smiles and says, No, he's much too strong. To be honest, he should be the one to inherit the Hyuga clan and not me. No, you shouldn't doubt yourself, Hinata. You're a great ninja. Either way, it has to be me no matter what. But what do you mean by that? Any given leader of the Hyuga clan has the responsibility of choosing an heir, but they can only choose one. When they choose the heir, they cast a hidden jutsu on that particular Hyuga, and that jutsu imprints the Hyuga clan inheritance onto them. Whenever the Hyuga clan leader dies, the heir who had the inheritance imprinted becomes the new leader instantly. Naruto seems confused. Wait, but what, what does that mean? Do you get anything special when you inherit the clan? Or is it just a title? You do. The Hyuga clan leader has access to forbidden jutsus that only he knows, and that are passed down to the heir once the leader dies, ingrained on them by the imprinting of the Hyuga inheritance. That's why the clan head is always the strongest Hyuga. My father marked me as his heir minutes after I was born, a decision he regretted. But what why? Remember I told you you can only choose one heir? So when he chose me, he couldn't change it anymore. And after my sister was born, she showed many more qualities that my father found more suitable for the Hyuga heir than me. He really wished he had chosen Hanabi to imprint the Hyuga inheritance. Don't listen to him! You'll be a great leader! I hope so. Well, when I become leader of the Hyuga clan, you'll already be the Hokage, so I'll have you help me out. Naruto smiles, blushing. By the way! We still have to eat that ramen. We can do that when we come back to the village. Hinata smiles at him. I would love that. We cut to the outside. It's night. We see the moon and the stars looming in the sky above. Far away, standing on a tree branch, we see a figure wearing dark robes and an intimidating oni mask with no eye slits that covers the entire head. The oni masked figure observes the house Team Kakashi is in, which looks like a hill. The figure then abruptly turns 
its head towards another direction and jumps away, making no sound whatsoever. We cut to a battalion of 30 grass village ninjas walking on the same road Team Kakashi used just before they found the place deeper in the woods to set up camp. One of the grass ninjas says, Oh man, board patrolling missions are so boring. I'm so glad we're coming home. Another grass ninja replies, At least they pay well, and we actually get a pretty decent time off after they end. <laughs> I know what I'll be spending my money on. An older ninja, the captain of the battalion says, Quiet you, we're still on duty. He then kneels and touches the blades of grass on the ground. The older shinobi closes his eyes and his vision expands. He can see vague shapes of everything the grass touches at a very large range. He then notices something weird and says, There seems to be a new structure in this region. Looks like a house, about two miles southwest. We're gonna have to check that out. Some of the younger ninjas in the battalion sigh in annoyance. The captain says, I don't wanna hear complaining, okay? This is probably a new smuggler's outpost. Seems pretty well hidden too, but they didn't count they would be dealing with me. He says that with a grin. The Oni masked figure appears 10 meters in front of the grass ninja battalion, making no sound and spooking them. Some of the ninjas yelp in fear as they see the intimidating figure weakly illuminated by the moonlight. The older captain says, Who the hell are you? We hear a cacophony of steel sliding and clanking as the entire battalion draws their weapons. The Oni masked figure stares at them and says, I am afraid I cannot allow you to go where you intend to. Move along. I assure you that nothing harmful to your country is happening there. The captain scoffs and says, As if I would believe you, smuggler scum. Do you realize how ridiculous you look? Now, I'm gonna ask you again. Who the hell are you? The only mass figure remains silent. The captain then screams, I've lost my patience! He weaves hand signs, fire style, flame bullets! A fire projectile erupts out of the captain's mouth that streaks across the dark landscape and hits the only mass figure square on, exploding. The figure didn't even react to it. The ninjas in the battalion celebrate as the captain says, All right, lads! Let's go bust the rest of those smugglers! The Oni Mask figure calmly exits the fire and smoke created by the flame bullet, completely unharmed. The grass ninja's joy suddenly turns into apprehension. The Oni Mask figure weaves hand signs with blinding speed, lightning style, electric ray! The figure raises his hand and points two fingers towards the battalion. One bolt of bright blue lightning erupts from them, causing the air around it to shiver. The lightning strikes one grass grass ninja, passing completely through his body, hitting another one behind him and two more behind that one. The four fall dead instantly, with a smoking scorching mark where the lightning impacted. The captain yells, ATTACK YOU FOOLS! The battalion tosses multiple kunai, shurikens and jutsus at the same time towards the Oni Mask figure, who pulls a kunai, using it to parry the incoming blows and dodging the rest. A dozen grass ninjas then rush towards the Oni Mask figure and the rest stand behind waiting for an opening to attack from a distance. The dark figure weaves hand signs once more. Lightning style! Electric paradise! He hits his hand on the ground which erupts in lightning all around him, paralyzing the dozen ninjas that were rushing towards him. They all scream in pain and agony as the lightning swells around them and hits their bodies. The Oni Mask figure moves quickly and slashes the neck of every single ninja paralyzed by his lightning. They drop dead, oozing blood from their wounds. The captain who stood behind yells to the remaining ninjas, PULL BACK! WE HAVE TO GO BACK! But they're not not fast enough. The Oni Mask figure appears right in the middle of the rear shinobis. They take a while to notice that, as the figure is so quiet and stealthy. When they motion a reaction, it's too late. Lightning style, dancing lights. Dozens of lightning orbs erupt from all over the Oni Mask figure's body, being launched with great speed in all directions. They then hit the grass ninjas and erupt into a lightning explosion. Most of them falling dead. The ones were able to 
to survive the initial lightning orb hit are paralyzed by it and promptly finished by a kunai slash to the neck. The only ninja that was able to dodge the orbs was the captain, who stares at his whole battalion now dead, and the menacing Onimast figure looking straight at him. He screams, you bastard, and weaves hand signs. Fire style, great flame bullet. He spits an even large fire bullet at this time. The Onimast figure weaves hand signs simultaneously. Lightning style, electric ray. Shooting another bolt of lightning from the tip of two outstretched fingers. The flame bullet and the lightning bolt collide, exploding. But the captain realizes a little bit too late that the explosion was caused by the lightning destroying his fire style, which was unable to stop the lightning that erupts out of the smoke and flames, hitting the captain, who was only able to move out of the way enough to avoid a fatal hit. The lightning strikes his shoulder and he falls to the ground, shoulders smoldering and carbonized by the lightning style. The captain grimaces and moans in pain. He then sees it. The only mass figure coming out of the fire, once again walking calmly towards his direction. He is completely overtaken by fear, legs shaking as he tries to stand up but fails. In desperation, he tries to crawl away, but to no avail. Without any haste, the Onimast figure catches up to him. The captain turns towards the figure and he asks in complete terror, Who the hell are you? I am death. The Onimas figure stabs the captain's eye with a kunai, killing him instantly. We get a cinematic and menacing shot of the Onimas figure standing on top of the captain's dead body, surrounded by more dead grass ninjas, only illuminated by the fire and the moon. The Onimas figure then kneels, looking at the man he just killed. He weaves hand signs and touches the corpse. Hidden Jutsu, withering decay. Jagged red marks erupt out of the figure's hand and leap to the captain's body, encasing it completely, spreading even to the blood surrounding the corpse. Once the markings cover the entire body, it starts to disintegrate and turns into ash that just flies away with a cool night breeze until the whole body and the blood it spilled are completely gone. The Onimas figure stands up, moves to the next falling grass ninja and begins performing the same jutsu. The morning arrives and Naruto wakes up. He is pumped. Today is the day he'll catch that spy and find out where Sasuke is. He ties his headband and heads downstairs. Sakura and Yamato are already there and ready to go. Sakura says, Ready Naruto? Yeah! But where's Hinata? Oh, she hasn't come yet. Maybe she overslept a bit. Naruto thinks, damn it, we probably shouldn't have stayed up so late talking. Still, Naruto smiles as he remembers him laughing with Hinata until very late at night. Hinata then comes downstairs yawning, hair a bit disheveled. Naruto thinks, damn, she looks really cute like that. Hinata then says, with an apologetic smile, sorry I lost track of time. Yamato says, well maybe you shouldn't be going to bed so late in the middle of a mission. Hinata looks at him and Yamato instantly shuts his mouth. Naruto says in excitement, All right, let's go get that spy! I'm cutting out the practice scene that they had in the original because Yamato only did that to try and improve Naruto's teamwork with Sai. And the scene served to explain Sai's character a little bit more. But as Sai doesn't exist, in the rewrite, that scene is completely pointless. Team Kakashi arrives at Tenchi Bridge. Yamato, disguised as the Hiroko puppet, goes towards the bridge itself. Naruto, Sakura, and Hinata stay back in the forest, observing. Some time passes, and Hinata, with her Byakugan activated, eventually says, The spy is coming our way. Some more time passes, and a cloaked figure arrives at the bridge and walks towards the disguised Yamato. The Yamato, disguised as Sasori's Hiruko puppet, meeting the spy, who is still Kabuto in the rewrite. Their conversation goes about the same way it did in the original, and then Orochimaru arrives. Naruto, Hinata, Hinata and Sakura are watching from the forest. The scene unfolds the same way. Orochimaru talks to them a bit. Kabuto then attacks Yamato, destroying the Hiruko disguise, and Orochimaru wraps Yamato with snakes. However, in the rewrite, instead of using a substitution to avoid that, Yamato will use a wood clone, as basic substitutions don't exist in the rewrite. Yamato's conversation with Orochimaru and Kabuto continues the same way as in the 
original up until when Orochimaru says, Why don't you call in the two baby rats hidden in the forest? Yamato, who's very nervous at this point, calls in the rest of Team Kakashi. Hinata, Sakura, and Naruto enter the fray. Orochimaru then thinks, Interesting. I thought there were only two hidden in there. Naruto is fuming, just like in the original. We can see that the QB chakra is starting to flare. Things will then happen largely the same here. Naruto will begin to lose control and let his anger take over as the Nine Tails chakra oozes out of his body. He will attack Orochimaru as well, sending him flying off to the middle of the forest. Strangely though, Hinata seems oddly calm as Naruto Naruto rages. We'll also get the flashback where Jiraiya told Tsunari, Kakashi, and Yamato about the Four Tails version of the QB cloak and its powers. Orochimaru comes back and then they have that conversation with Yamato where Orochimaru tells him that he was an experiment he conducted with Hashirama cells just like in the original. Orochimaru then provokes Naruto even more about Sasuke the way he did in the original and Naruto manifests the third tail. And now now we get to the big changes. For starters, Kabuto will not rush at the three tails like in the original because that's just very stupid, it makes no sense. Instead, Kabuto will only observe as Yamato is the one trying to rush at the nine tails, attempting to contain it. Naruto flares the QB chakra, hitting Yamato square on with a tail, exploding the bridge that sends Yamato flying away. The bridge beneath gets wrecked and the cat Captain of Team Kakashi sustains a bad wound to his abdomen. Yamato's flying limp body impacts with Sakura, knocking her unconscious off the bridge. Sakura begins falling down, and Yamato crashes to the other side of the bridge, hitting the ground and creating a crater upon impact. He appears to be breathing, but very much unconscious and wounded. Kabuto managed to jump away in time to avoid any impact from Naruto's QB chakra, and he Hinata used her Hyuga rotation, blocking it and taking no damage. She sees Sakura falling off the bridge and jumps down, diving face first towards Sakura's direction. Hinata intercepts the unconscious Sakura midair, grabbing her with one arm, holding her tight. With her free arm, Hinata uses a powerful air palm aimed to her side that propels her towards the wall of the chasm. She lands on it sideways, using her chakra to stand up horizontally on the chasm wall holding Sakura, who is still unconscious. Wreckage of Tenchi Bridge falls towards their direction, about to crush them. Hinata uses an air pump to shatter it, saving Sakura one more time. Naruto, overtaken by rage and the QB Chakra, begins pursuing and fighting Orochimaru, and that fight will remain largely the same as in the original. The only difference is that Orochimaru will go in clearly wanting to kill Naruto. He'll think, if I kill the Nine Tails Jinchuriki here. The Nine Tails Chakra will take over a decade to coalesce back into the world, which will put a halt to the Akatsuki's plans. <laughs> As Yamato is unconscious, he won't be able to send a wood clone to watch over the fight, but Hinata will be watching over it instead. She'll watch it from a distance with her Byakugan, and she will provide the same commentary as Yamato did in the original. That fight will then ensue the same way it did in the original manga. Kabuto, who dodged the initial Nine Tails blast unharmed, sees Yamato unconscious, bleeding from his abdomen. He smirks and thinks, Well, let's get rid of this loose end Lord Orochimaru left in the Leaf Village, shall we? Kabuto activates his chakra scalpel and swings at the unconscious Jonin's neck. As he's about to finish Yamato off, Kabuto gets hit by a wave of compressed air that sends him flying away. He lands on his feet that was prevented from striking Yamato at the last second. When Kabuto looks up, he sees Hinata who just climbed up the chasm carrying Sakura on her back. One hand outstretched, which she used to blow an air palm towards Kabuto's direction. Hinata then stands in front of Yamato. She sees that he is alive with her Byakugan and gently lays Sakura on the ground next to him, telling Kabuto, we're supposed to capture the spy alive, but to Aiming was never forbidden. Kabuto laughs. You think you can fight me, pathetic? 
pathetic girl. Hinata says, I won't fight you, no. I will destroy you. Kabuto smiles. I saved your life once, you know. You probably wouldn't remember, though. You were quite unconscious. Is this how you repay me? Hinata says, I couldn't care less. Kabuto laughs and says, Well, today's our lucky day. Lord Orochimaru will kill Naruto and ruin the Akatsuki's plans. And I will capture a prime Hyuga specimen for experimentation as a cherry on top. You have no chance against me. Surrender, and I may allow you anesthetics while Lord Orochimaru is plucking your eyeballs. Hinata dashes towards Kabuto. He activates his chakra scalpels and they engage in taijutsu combat. Gentle Fist versus Kabuto's cutting chakra. Hinata is able to avoid the scalpels but unable to strike back because Kabuto uses them as a defensive jutsu as well, putting them in front of Hinata's gentle face attacks, which prevents Hinata from making contact with her hands, otherwise she would get cut. Hinata misses a strike to Kabuto's side, but she flicks her wrist, blasting another air palm out of her hand, hitting Kabuto on the side of his head. He gets very discombobulated, his vision blurs and his ears buzz. Kabuto jumps away and Hinata motions a hand sign that Kabuto cannot identify because of the blurness and his vision. Knocked off balance, Kabuto begins weaving hand signs in desperation. Genjutsu! False life! Hinata is caught on the Genjutsu. The ground suddenly turns into an ocean of corpses. Hinata falls down to it and the corpses begin grabbing and slashing at her. She centers herself and blasts her own chakra out of her body, breaking the Genjutsu. The ground goes back to normal. However, Kabuto is right in front of her. The time she was under the illusion was enough for him to get closer and prepare a scalpel attack. It seems he recovered from the arm palm blast. The scalpel slashes towards Hinata's chest, but Hinata expels chakra from that area, creating a barrier that blocks the chakra scalpel. Hinata rotates, using the spinning to hit Kabuto and sends him flying off. We can see Kabuto's arm and chest were hit by Hinata's rotation and he lands poorly. He stands up, and as he does so, he is already healing his wounds. While this is happening, Naruto is fighting Orochimaru, and Hinata is watching that with her Byakugan. Kabuto looks at his wounds and thinks, I cannot believe this girl is this strong. She didn't even have the backbone to be a ninja back in the tuning exams. He doesn't have much time to think, though, as another Hinata appears behind him. Gentle Fist, positive energy seal. Hinata Hinata's index and middle fingers glow red as she strikes Kabuto from behind. He is sent flying one more time. The Hinata who was in front of him doesn't let up. As Kabuto lands, she enters a stance, preparing the 64 palms to finish him off. Kabuto then pulls a kunai with a paper bomb explosive and tosses it towards Sakura and Yamato who are still unconscious, laying on the ground. Hinata halts the 64 palms and instead directs an air palm towards the flying kunai, hitting it and changing its direction. This saves Yamato and Sakura as the kunai explodes far away from them. Kabuto uses that window of opportunity to jump out of Hinata's reach. The Hinata who appeared behind Kabuto stands beside the original Hinata now. Kabuto thinks, shadow clone. But when did she do it? He remembers it then. Right after his vision got blurred, Hinata weaved a hand sign he couldn't see well. He also couldn't hear the shadow clone being formed because his ears were buzzing. He thinks, I have to take this seriously or I'll die. Kabuto then notices something. The wounds he sustained after getting hit by Hinata's rotation are not healing anymore. Hinata says, you won't be able to heal yourself for a while after my positive energy seal. And if this was a fair fight, you'd already be dead. Kabuto says, I thought you're only going to maim me. Hinata says, maybe I changed my mind. Kabuto says, whatever. Answer me this though, if Sasori didn't make it here, and told you about this mini on this bridge, it means that he is either dead or captured. Hinata says, you'll be the next one to die. Kabuto says, well, it's great to hear he is dead. You saved Lord Orochimaru and myself a lot of work by killing him. Now, where were we? Kabuto pulls five scrolls from his satchel. He tosses them on the ground, rolling them open. Weaving hand signs, he says, summoning jutsu. Five animated corpses appear out of the scrolls. Not Ero 
tenses, but actual dead bodies. Inata sees with her Byakugan that the dead bodies are indeed imbued with chakra, and she deduces they respond to Kabuto's commands. Hinata uses the Shadow Clone Jutsu one more time. Three more Hinata clones appear. Kabuto says, That pesky little Shadow Clone Jutsu, huh? Copying the Nine Tails rat will get you nowhere. Hinata gives Kabuto a death stare. She thinks, I cannot let him get close to Sakura and Captain Yamato. One of her clones jumps back, standing directly in front of her two unconscious companions. Kabuto sends his five corpses forward. He joins them in the offensive as well. Hinata and three of her shadow clones also dash forward, clashing with Kabuto and his summons. One of the corpses spits a tar-like substance, aiming for Hinata and her clones, and they respond rotating again, blocking the tar. Another corpse jumps towards their direction, opens its vest, and we see it's filled with paper bombs. Kabuto detonates it. The corpse explodes with ferocity, igniting the tar. Tall flames rise, but Hinata's rotation still holds against the fire and the shockwave of the explosion. Kabuto now has four corpses. Another corpse runs towards Yamato and Sakura's direction. We see its vest is also filled with paper bombs. The Hinata clone protecting the two unconscious companions dashes forward and intercepts that corpse, landing a gentle fist blow. The corpse explodes, destroying that Hinata clone as well. Luckily, Sakura and Yamato were not harmed by that explosion. Kabuto has three corpses now. Hinata and her other clones stop rotating. Kabuto dashes forward. He slashes at two Hinata clones, cutting them with his chakra scalpel. They vanish. Hinata and her last remaining clone stand back to back. They are attacked by Kabuto and two corpses. The third corpse dashes towards Yamato and Sakura once again. Hinata and her clone defend themselves. The clone begins a rotation once more, and the real Hinata rushes towards the third corpse to intercept it. As she does that, Kabuto is able to hit her shoulder with his chakra scalpel. Hinata winces in pain, but blitzes the third corpse. Hinata takes a stance and says, 8 trigrams, 64 palms. She hits the corpse with blinding speed, shutting down its chakra and the paper bombs attached to it. It falls to the ground, not exploding. The other two corpses manage to destroy the Hinata clone, stopping her rotation with two simultaneous jets of tar. They rush towards the real Hinata now, readying tar once more. Hinata thinks, they will try to stop my rotation, I can't let that happen. She then uses a barrage of air palms blasting compressed air towards the corpses, who attempt to spit the tar, but the air palms blast it. They impact the tar, making it explode into several drops of a very thick substance. The several blasts don't allow the tar to get too far and reach Hinata. While this is happening, Hinata sees the four tails using its bijudama on Orochimaru, creating this massive explosion that destroys the triple Rashomon and sends a powerful shockwave. Kabuto seems distracted for an instant with the sight of the explosion. Hinata uses that opportunity and rushes the two corpses, taking another stance this time. 16 trigrams, 128 palms! Hinata hits both corpses with amazing speed. Kabuto is barely able to see her fists move as she shuts down both of the corpses, diffusing the paper bombs as well. While she did that though, Kabuto weaved hand signs and tossed a kunai at her direction. Hinata uses her chakra as a barrier again. The kunai impacts it, doing no damage to Hinata. Kabuto closes his eyes and says, Very predictable. Ninja art. Flashbang kunai. The kunai he tossed and impacted on Hinata's chakra shield is still floating midair in front of her. It erupts into a bright flash of white light, blinding Hinata. Kabuto says, Now let's see how well you fight without your eyesight. Hinata, not seeing anything, thinks, I have to protect those two. She uses her memory to run towards Yamato and Sakura, listening in for Kabuto. She hears Kabuto running towards her direction, preparing a scalpel to target her, and immediately begins a rotation. A couple of seconds pass, Hinata still spinning. She then feels a sharp pain on both of her ankles as Kabuto used the sound of the rotation to hide the noise he made to go underground and emerged at Hinata's feet, coming from below, the only direction the rotation doesn't protect the user from, and attacked Hinata's ankles. Hinata falls prone. For some reason, her body stops to function correctly. She can no longer move the right way. It seems like every body part she tries to move
move provokes another body part to move instead. Kabuto landed the same attack Tsunade used against him a long time ago when he attacked Kinata's ankles. He learned it over the time skip after finding it most useful during his fight against Tsunade. He then emerges completely from the underground and says, I admit it was much harder than I thought it would be. He prepares a blow to incapacitate Hinata. As he does so, an ethereal avatar of Sakura holds him in place, paralyzing him while it screams, You're not moving anywhere, you bastard! Sakura has woken up, and she casts her signature genjutsu on Kabuto. He thinks, Genjutsu, damn it, I can't move. I can't even break out of it. With a massive effort, Kabuto forces his arms together, forming a hand sign. Sakura screams, Too late, you punk! As she lands a devastating punch on Kabuto's stomach. We see his ribcage cracking open and he is sent flying, impacting the ground. Sakura jumps to follow up and finish him off. She comes down from the sky and lands a descending kick on Kabuto's torso, literally cutting him in half. Her leg shears through Kabuto, it impacts the ground and forms a massive impact crater as boulders of stone fly in all directions. Sakura says, The mission was to capture you, but better safe than sorry. She looks at Kabuto's body, cut in half. She then realizes something alarming. That body doesn't have Kabuto's face, it's just someone else's. Hinata is still prone and unable to move due to Kabuto's jutsu. One of the corpses lying close to her stands up. It is Kabuto. He activates a chakra scalpel and goes straight to finish her off. The world turns into slow motion. Hinata closes her eyes and thinks, he disrupted my neural network, my body isn't responding correctly. Still, the nervous system is powered by electricity, essentially lightning style. That I can deal with. She centers herself. Kabuto smiles as he's about to strike Hinata. She then opens her eyes and counters his attack with a gentle fist blow to his chest. Kabuto spits blood and pulls back to a safe distance. Sakura jumps back to Hinata's side saying, Hinata, are you okay? Hinata says, I can't stand up, he got my feet tendons. Sakura promptly begins to heal Hinata's heels and Yamato simultaneously with her medical ninjutsu. She says, I was careless. He was able to form a seal at the last second before I punched him, even under my genjutsu. He used some type of substitution and swapped places with one of those dead bodies. Most substitution jutsus are gone in the rewrite, but this one is very cool. It's the same technique Kabuto used to escape Kakashi when he infiltrated Konoha's hospital to try to kill Sasuke. It's also a very taxing jutsu in the rewrite, chakra-wise. By the way, Orochimaru's skin change substitution will also stay because that one is amazing as well and it fits perfectly with the character theme. And as I said before, the Orochimaru vs. Four Tails fight will remain mechanically the same. Kabuto stands wounded 20 paces away from the two girls. He thinks, I can't believe these two brats put that much pressure on me. If I hadn't used my substitution at the last second, I would be dead. It spent almost all my chakra and I can't heal my wounds. Lord Orochimaru, how much longer are you gonna take? Sakura tells Hinata, we can take him. Hinata stands up, now healed, and says, yes, I can see his chakra is very low. Yamato, being healed by Sakura, stirs a little. Hinata then continues, we can capture him, and then we go help Naruto with Orochimaru. Sakura says, what? Hinata says, yeah, Naruto was overtaken by the Kyuubi chakra and I was fighting Orochimaru, to the death, by the way. He's winning, though. She then turns her head alarmed towards the direction where Naruto and Orochimaru are fighting and says, They're coming this way, watch out! Orochimaru uses the extremely elongated Kusanagi sword, hitting the four tails and making it crash near Hinata and Sakura's location. The Kusanagi sword is still unable to pierce the four tails chakra hide. Within the crater created by the four tails in the middle of the forest, Orochimaru reaches his limit and thinks, It seems I won't be able to kill Naruto. This body is expiring. The time to take Sasuke. Is near. Kabuto looks at the four tails that landed nearby. He thinks, You've progressed quite a lot, huh? This isn't even a battle between ninjas anymore, but more of a battle between monsters. <laughs> Sakura looks at Naruto taken by the demonic chakra. She remembers everything Naruto's been through and starts to cry. Kabuto says, So this is how far he will go to rescue Sasuke. The boy is gone, only the monster remains. Sakura remembers the promise Naruto 
Naruto made her to bring Sasuke back. She screams, No, Naruto! I'll rescue Sasuke! Come back, please! She motions to dash towards the Four Tails. Hinata holds her down, though, not letting Sakura move. She says, Sakura, don't be so hasty. Naruto can kill you right now. Kabuto only observes everything that's happening. Yamato opens his eyes. He grimaces in pain, but that pales in comparison to the dread he feels as he sees the Four Tails. He stands up and says, I have to contain that chakra. You too, you'll be my backup. The Four Tails gets up as well and dashes towards Yamato with blinding speed. Thick wood roots erupt out of the ground aiming at the Four Tails. Naruto is able to resist them and destroy some of them. Sakura then uses her Genjutsu avatar to hold Naruto down, but he is too powerful and can still move. More wood comes out of the ground, restraining the Nine Tails even further, but it still resists. Hinata dashes at the almost immobilized Naruto, takes his hands and executes the 64 palms, making some of the Nine Tails chakra recoil. However, the Nine Tails strikes Hinata with one of its four tails, sending her flying as she falls unconscious. Yamato notices something strange about Hinata taking that attack. Still, he doesn't think too much of it. He swoops in and executes his chakra suppression ability connecting with Tsunade's necklace and the QB chakra begins to fade. Kabuto sees Hinata laying on the ground and jumps towards her direction. Sakura sees that and runs to intercept. Yamato can't do anything. He is putting all of his strength into containing the Nine Tails. Kabuto sees Sakura coming towards him. He pulls two kunais with paper bombs out of his satchel and tosses them towards Yamato. Sakura then throws two shurikens to intercept the kunais. They are diverted and explode far away from Yamato. But Kabuto uses that moment of distraction to grab Hinata and tosses a smoke bomb to cover his retreat. Sakura tries to pursue Kabuto, but he is gone. And he took Hinata with him. Yamato then suppresses the Nine Tails chakra completely and Naruto falls unconscious. His skin is completely gone. Sakura begins healing Naruto and also Yamato as he is still wounded from the Nine Tails attack. Sakura and Yamato then have a similar interaction as they had in the original, though they are much colder to each other. At the end of it, Yamato swallows his pride and says, Thanks for the save, by the way. You let Kabuto capture Hinata because you had to stop those kunais. Sakura says, I didn't do it for you. Naruto wakes up as confused as he was in the original. Sakura cries tears of joy and Naruto doesn't understand why she's crying. Naruto looks around and says, where's Hinata? Yamato is very serious. He says, you let the Nine Tails take control over you and then you fought Orochimaru. You also hit Hinata and because of that she was captured. Naruto is mortified. His face is pure despair and he screams, we have to go after her now! Yamato says, we'll do, but we'll have to track her first. We cut to Kabuto as he regroups with Orochimaru, still carrying Hinata. Kabuto says, Lord Orochimaru, I think I managed to salvage our trip here with this little souvenir. Orochimaru looks at Kabuto, anger flaring in his eyes. Don't patronize me, Kabuto. The Nine Tails is more powerful than I anticipated. We have to get back. They then set off. In the rewrite, Yamato didn't put those trackers on Team Kakashi's foot, so he doesn't have a certified way of tracking Hinata down. They still do their best, looking for clues in the forest, and Naruto is still very much affected by having attacked Hinata. Yamato tells him, Naruto, you cannot use the Nine Tails Chakra anymore. I was assigned to this team because I can deal with it, but that power isn't yours. You'll be a detriment to us if you use it. Naruto nods, forgetting the ill will he had with Yamato for a second. His only concern now is Hinata. Sakura then sees something on the ground, a small dot of bright yellow light. She calls Naruto and Yamato over. Yamato looks at it and says, I knew there was something weird when Naruto struck Hinata. Now I understand. Sakura says, what do you mean? He points to the bright light on the ground and says, this jutsu is called sweat tracking. The user imbues its own sweat with chakra, and a couple of minutes after the sweat leaves the body of the user, it shines bright with that chakra. It requires amazing chakra control, as the user has to infuse chakra within their sweat glands, but it's perfect for tracking. Naruto says, But why would Orochimaru and Kabuto leave a trail behind? Yamato looks annoyed, but says, It's not them, it's Hinata. She's just pretending she's unconscious and leaving this behind for us to follow her into their hideout. I saw when she got 
got hit by the Nine Tails' tail. She used her chakra to block it, but still fell unconscious. Naruto screams, Why would she risk herself so much going into Orochimaru's lair? Yamato looks at Naruto dead serious and says, That girl seems to have an adoration for you, maybe even an obsession. Don't ask me why. She'll probably do anything for this mission to be a success. Still, this gives us an advantage. If Kabuto didn't notice Hinata is not unconscious, this probably means Hinata can fake unconsciousness as well. Naruto smiles in relief that at least his attack wasn't the reason why Hinata got captured. Team Kakashi then begins to follow the trail of Bright Sweat. We cut to Orochimaru and Kabuto who's still carrying Hinata. Her eyes are shut and we see she's dripping sweat. She thinks, Naruto, please notice the trail. Kabuto and Orochimaru then do the same trick they did in the original of faking a dead body, but in the rewrite, instead of using Sai's body, they'll use Hinata's. This is much more shocking for Naruto and Sakura at first. Naruto even gets very desperate when he sees Hinata hanged there, but he gets very relieved when he learns it's a fake. Team Kakashi pursues Kabuto and Orochimaru and things remain largely the same up until Orochimaru and Kabuto arrive at their hideout. Kabuto still holding Hinata. She thinks, I had to stop my sweating before we got to the hideout, otherwise they would have noticed the tracking drops. She then senses something that sends shivers down her spine. It's someone's chakra. Hinata finds this extremely alarming. She just witnessed the might of the Nine Tails, and she is right next to Orochimaru, but they pale in comparison to this new chakra. This one is different. It's denser, more intense. For the first time during this mission, Hinata feels fear. She then senses they are getting closer to that chakra. Kabuto then stops, and Orochimaru says, We have returned, and we've also got a little something during our little excursion. <laughs> I figured you'd be a little nostalgic. Hinata opens her eyes ever so slightly. She sees a dark figure sitting in front of a large snake statue. The figure opens its eyes and Hinata sees the crimson collar of the Sharingan. That's the only detail she can see clearly. Sasuke Uchiha says, What's the big idea of bringing someone like her to this place, Orochimaru? Feeling bored? Not necessarily. Her eyes will be a fine addition to my collection of jutsus. I can think of many abilities I can develop with them. You're disgusting. Hinata sees Sasuke's Sharingan expanding. She feels as though she is engulfed by sheer power and absolute fear takes over her. Orochimaru and Kabuto feel perturbed as well. Kabuto says, stop that boy, if you know what's good for you. You know Sasuke is more difficult than I am, Kabuto. <laughs> you know Sasuke, I just fought Naruto. The Nine Tails almost took him over completely. The poor little Nine Tails. I don't care about him. I mastered the last jutsu you showed me. Come and show me the next one. I'm afraid I'll have to postpone your training. My body's being weakened by the fight. You were weakened by that loser? That's quite pathetic. Kabuto, throw that girl in the room and make sure she is sedated. We'll change hideouts soon. Yeah. Yes, Lord Orochimaru. We cut to Team Kakashi. Yamato, Naruto, and Sakura are pursuing the bright sweat drops left behind by Hinata. Naruto is tense. He thinks, Hinata, please be safe. He then says, If Orochimaru lays a single finger on Hinata, I'll destroy him! Yamato says, No, you have to control your anger. We don't want another Nine Tails incident. Naruto is still very much tense. And Yamato continues, Hinata will be fine. She may not look, but she is extremely strong. She's probably stronger than I am. Sakura is surprised. She says, Really? Yamato says, Yeah, she's no ordinary shinobi. We should not be worrying too much about her and more about retrieving Sasuke. Naruto says, Orochimaru and Kabuto should still be low on chakra and we have plenty, so they won't be a problem. Yamato says, It is still Orochimaru. Don't underestimate him and we'll have to deal with Sasuke. Sakura says, Yes, and we cannot kill him. Naruto says, There's no way Sasuke can take 
on all of us at the same time. Naruto says that, but deep down he's not so confident. He remembers the last time they fought in the Valley of the End and how Sasuke beat him, even though Naruto used the Nine Tails Chakra. Captain Yamato, if everything else fails, can I use the Nine Tails Chakra? No, for crying out loud! Didn't you hear me the first time? Even Jiraiya knows you shouldn't do that. I'm certain he warned you about it. We'll infiltrate their hideout and take Sasuke back together, understand? No Nine Tails Chakra. Sakura looks at Naruto with a confident face, reassuring him. Naruto, this time we'll bring Sasuke back together. Naruto gains a boost in confidence and says, Yeah, we will. Kabuto tosses Hinata's limp body into one of the rooms in the hideout. He pulls a syringe and injects Hinata's arm with a substance, saying, This should knock you out for a good while. Sweet dreams. As Kabuto injects her with that, Hinata uses her chakra control to create a chakra barrier within her arm muscles in the region of the injection, which prevents the substance from spreading around her entire body. Kabuto then leaves the room and locks the door. Hinata waits a couple of minutes, still concentrated on the chakra barrier in her muscles. She then thinks ninja art, sweat control. She imbues her arm with chakra and it begins to sweat profusely. Right at the area where she was injected and where she also used the chakra barrier, the sweat expels the substance Kabuto injected and she then thinks, it doesn't seem like he noticed I was faking. All this sweating made me really dehydrated. I have to get out of here as soon as I can and find some water. Also, Sasuke is definitely a huge problem. There's absolutely no chance we can take him on by ourselves. I have to warn Naruto and the others about that. Hinata uses a gentle fist bomb on the door, cracking it open. As she is extremely proficient, she barely makes any noise doing so. Hinata leaves the room dashing through the hallways of the hideout, her Byakugan activated. She makes no noise as she moves stealthily towards a place she thinks she can try an exit from. Naruto, Yamato and Sakura continue to make their way towards the hideout. They then notice that they are being trailed by someone. Naruto says, we're being followed. Sakura says, what do we do? Yamato says, damn it, not having a sensory type sucks. We have to halt and face them. They already know we're here anyway and I don't know who they are. Team Kakashi stops and assumes a defensive position. Three grass ninjas emerge from a rock formation. Yamato says, oh, you gotta be kidding me. The leader of the three grass ninjas says, what the hell are three leaf ninjas doing here? Yamato says in annoyance, we have no time for your crap. He begins weaving hand signs. Sakura sees that and holds Yamato back, preventing him from forming the jutsu. Naruto then uses the shadow clone jutsu, creating five clones, and he rushes the grass ninjas. They engage in a quick taijutsu exchange, and they are no match for Naruto, who quickly makes short work of them, knocking them all out cold with taijutsu. Naruto then looks at Yamato and says, they're just doing patrol, there's no need to kill them like you are about to do. Sakura says, yeah, why the hell would you do that? Yamato says, your view of the world is so beautiful, unfortunately, this is the real world, and these men will report that leaf ninjas attack them once they wake up and go back to their superiors. We have to kill them. Naruto says, no, you're not killing them. It's just not right. Why are you acting so high and mighty, Nine Tails? I read your file. You killed before, and you did that to protect an enemy shinobi. She is not an enemy. Sakura screams, enough, both of you. We're wasting time. I can cast a genjutsu and make them forget what happened moments before we knock them out. Yamato says, that's not good enough. They'll notice something was off, and they may even have defenses against genjutsu. Some people are simply good at resisting it. I'm the captain here, and you'll do as I say. We have to take them out. Naruto's about to explode in anger. He then thinks of something he always does to try and calm himself down. He thinks of himself eating a nice Ichiraku bowl of ramen, and then says, Look, Captain Yamato, I may hate you, and you may hate me, and that's fine, but killing this man is not right, and it will not contribute to our mission. They probably have families, they're just doing their jobs. Besides, they're not even that strong. I doubt they'll have any methods to counter Sakura's genjutsu. Yamato considers that. He sighs and says, Fine, but if this comes around and affects the mission, I'll report you. That's fine by me. Sakura casts her genjutsu on the unconscious grass ninjas and they continue to follow the sweat trail. Hinata navigates through the long hallways of Rochimaru's hideout, using her Byakugan to make sure she won't encounter anyone on her way. Strangely, she is feeling as though she knows exactly where she needs to go. She 
She notices that the rooms in the hideout are sealed with some type of special metal that prevents her Byakugan from peering through. Hinata keeps running. She turns a corner and then freezes in place. What she sees sends shivers down her spine. The silhouette of Sasuke Uchiha. We don't see his body in detail, just like before he is covered in shadow. Sasuke seemed to be waiting for Hinata there, in the middle of the hallway, and she feels the pressure the showering gun exerts on her. Hinata assumes a fighting stance. They are both silent for a moment. She then finally says, How did you hide from my Byakugan? You're under my genjutsu. What? When? The first time you looked into my eyes. I cast a subtle genjutsu on you. Kabuto and Orochimaru were too dull-witted, but I noticed you were faking. I was the one who brought you to this place with my genjutsu. Hinata is scared. She thinks, that's why I felt like I knew where to go. She immediately forms a hand seal, expelling the chakra and breaking the genjutsu, and then says, I admit, you're strong. You would have been a great asset to the Leaf Village. That bunch of losers? You know, Naruto has worked hard over the last three years to bring you back. He thinks of you as a brother. The only brother I have, I will kill. Team Kakashi finally reaches the end of the sweat trail. They are in a barren landscape without much vegetation. Yamato says, the entrance for the hideout is really hidden somewhere close. Look for signs of hidden passages, footprints, and things like that. Naruto and Sakura nod and begin their search. Hinata stared at Sasuke, still showing fear, but ready for battle. She says, so what's it gonna be? You brought me here to this area far away from everyone, so no one's gonna hear you killing me? I have no interest in fighting you. I brought you here because I know Kabuto and Orochimaru wouldn't be around. And if I were you, I would use this place to leave at once as quickly as you can and never come back. If you stay, Orochimaru will use you as a lab rat. Sasuke's shadowy figure vanishes, making no noise. Hinata then looks at the wall she is standing right next to in the hideout and uses her rotation, moving towards it and carving an entire hole through the wall until she erupts out of the hideout, escaping. Naruto, Sakura, and Yamato are looking for the hideout. Hinata then arrives at their location. Naruto sees her, his eyes open wide, and he smiles, relieved and happy. He begins to go towards Hinata's direction, but Yamato jumps in front of Naruto, pointing a kunai at Hinata. Naruto gets angry. He looks at Yamato and says, What the hell are you doing? We can't know for certain if that's the real Hinata or just the enemy in disguise. Don't be so naive. Naruto understands. Hinata says, Well, that's a reasonable assumption. Sakura says, well, we should just ask Hinata something only she would know. Naruto thinks for a second and asks, Hinata, what did you tell me last night? Hinata blushes and says, last night I told you that when I become the Hiwa clan leader, you will already be the Hokage and you'll help me out with my clan leader duties. After she says that, Naruto realizes the nature of his question and blushes as well. Yeah, that checks out. Hinata says, if you need more proof, Hinata uses a short burst of her Hyuga rotation and continues, I don't think our enemies can do that. Yamato sighs in relief and lowers the kunai. Naruto runs towards Hinata and hugs her tight saying, why would you risk yourself so much? That was not intelligent, Hinata. She blushes even more, hugging Naruto back and saying, I saw a chance and I took it. I'm sorry I worried you, Naruto. Yamato looks extremely annoyed. He says, are you done hugging? We have a mission to complete. Naruto and Hinata let go of their embrace. Sakura looks at them with a sheepish smile. Hinata looks at Naruto and says, Do you have water by any chance? I use a lot of fluids to keep on sweating that much. Naruto quickly grabs a water canister from his backpack and passes it over to Hinata. She drinks all the water left in there. The water clears Hinata's mind a bit and she realizes something alarming. Naruto hugged her while she was terribly sweaty. She gets extremely ashamed but quickly tries to forget that blunder. Sakura asks, So Hinata, how did you escape? I use a technique I know to fake unconsciousness. They threw me in a cell and left me alone there. It wasn't too difficult to break out. Yamato says, So you know the layout of their base? I know a part of it. It's 
pretty big though. But there's something else, something more alarming. Hinata looks at Naruto and continues. I saw Sasuke. Naruto and Sakura say at the same time, Really? Naruto says, What happened? Tell me! I couldn't see him in too much detail, but somehow he helped me to get out of there. I knew it. I knew Sasuke wasn't like Orochimaru. I knew he would help you. He told me never to return, and he didn't seem particularly inclined to come back to the village. Well then, I guess the new plan is the old plan. Bring Sasuke back, even if we have to fight him. We can't, Naruto. He is out of our league. What do you mean, Hinata? I mean that if we fight him, we'll lose. Sakura says, even all of us together? I'm afraid so. Yamato says, if you're saying that, then we should probably pull back. We would need reinforcements to capture him. Naruto says, no, we've come so far. We're not turning back now. Hinata says, Naruto, we cannot defeat him. It's just useless. We won't know until we try. We have to. I'm not leaving Sasuke here with Orochimaru. He's gonna take his body and kill Sasuke. We cannot let this happen. Come on. Sakura says, he's right. Our friend is within our reach and he needs our help. Yamato says, your help won't matter if he simply kills you on the spot. Naruto says, he won't kill us. He's not like that. Yamato says, you two really are naive. We are pulling back. I trust Hinata's judgment. We'll go back to the village and request reinforcements. Sakura says, it will be too late. They won't even be here anymore when we come back. Naruto says, yeah, I don't care about your orders. I'm going with or without you. Yamato says, you little scum. This is insubordination. I'll have you court-martialed for that. Naruto looks dead serious at Yamato and says, yeah, those who break the rules are scum, but those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. I understand if you don't want to come and I don't blame you, but if you try to stop me, you'll have to kill me. Naruto turns around, making his way towards the direction Hinata came from. Sakura promptly joins him as well. Yamato stares at Naruto. His expression is a mixture of annoyance, incredulity, anger, and surprisingly, respect. Hinata motions to follow Naruto and Sakura as well. Yamato sees that and tells her, why are you going with them? You were the one who saw how bad our chances are. Why march your death? Our chances make no difference. I'll be by Naruto's side no matter what. Especially in a moment like this where I may be able to save him somehow, even if I have to give my life in the process. Why do you love this boy so much? We see a brief flashback of kid Naruto standing in front of Hinata, protecting her from someone. Naruto is a better person than anyone you've ever known. He's a much better person than myself, and he'll become a great Hokage one day. If I can do anything to protect that, to protect his dream, I'll gladly do so. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but still you're probably gonna die. And then Naruto will be killed as well. Maybe, but there's no changing his mind. And if there's anyone that can pull off a miracle in a situation like this, that would be Naruto. Hinata goes after Naruto and Sakura. Naruto says, I knew you were coming with us, Hinata. Hinata nods. Yamato sees that. He sighs and says to no one in particular, I cannot believe I'm doing this. He goes after the three as well. When Naruto sees Yamato joining them, he says, no backing down now. Just shut up and let's get going. Team Kakashi arrives at the place where Hinata busted out of the hideout. Yamato looks at the hole in the rock and he says, oh, this entire hideout seems to be surrounded by rocks. Hinata, are you sure you didn't alert the enemy when you escaped? No, this area of the hideout is very empty. Besides, I tried to be as silent as I could be. Yamato says, all right, the order of infiltration will be myself, Sakura, Naruto, and Hinata. Hinata says, there are are many rooms in this hideout, even if we're very stealthy. It will be hard to check them all out before we're detected. Besides, for some reason, I can't see through those doors with my Byakugan. Yamato sighs. Well then, we'll have to expedite the process. Hinata and Naruto, you're going to use shadow clones so we can cover more ground, and I'll use my wood clones. If we find someone other than Sasuke, we converge on that location and eliminate them. If we find Sasuke, we converge and capture him. Team Kakashi nods. They enter the hideout. Naruto, Hinata, and Yamato create their clones and begin searching, separating themselves to cover more ground, opening the doors at random and checking them out. They do that for a while, until Yamato opens one particular door. Similar to all the others, but this time Yamato sees someone in the room lying in bed. Back! turn towards Yamato, and he sees the Uchiha emblem on the clothing. Yamato 
Natu begins sending silent roots towards Sasuke. The roots climb Sasuke's bed and they get very close to him. As they do so, Sasuke says, Who is it? Yamato freezes. He says, I'm here to bring you back to the Leaf Village. I'm here with your friend. Sasuke doesn't move. He says, You woke me up to spout this nonsense? The roots target Sasuke, attempting to restrain him. Naruto, Hinata and Sakura, who are at different positions, hear a massive explosion. Hinata uses her Byakugan to see what happened. She sees it and thinks, this is not good. The three make their way towards the explosion. We cut to Yamato. He is on the ground, in the center of a crater created within the hideout itself. His body is severely burned and he winces in pain. He looks up and sees the dark outline of Sasuke backed up against the sun looming above. Yamato thinks, I didn't expect him to shake off my jutsu so forcefully. That fire style was insane! Sakura is the first one to arrive. She sees Yamato lie on the ground, burned, and thinks, I have to go heal him. Sakura runs and steps into the crater. As she does that, Hinata and Naruto reach the end of the hallway and they see Sakura getting close to Yamato. Sakura hears a voice saying, Well, well, well. If it isn't Sakura, Sakura thinks, this voice. She slowly looks up to where the voice came from. Sakura says, Sasuke? Naruto sees that and quickly runs towards them. Hinata goes with him. Naruto stumbles and falls. Hinata picks him up and they continue to run until they emerge on the crater. Naruto looks up as well and sees Sasuke. Now, for the first time, we see how he actually looks like. His expression is cool and nonplussed. Sasuke he stares Team Kakashi down, and Naruto stares back at him. Sasuke says, You really are here then, Naruto. I assume this means Kakashi is here somewhere as well? Sorry to disappoint you, but I came in his stead. As I said before, we, Team Kakashi, are here to bring you back to the Leaf Village. Sasuke says, Team Kakashi, huh? He looks at Hinata. I thought I told you never to come back here. You're weaklings. You shouldn't be meddling with what you don't understand. Naruto and Sakura seem too shocked to speak. Yamato says, These two have a deep bond with you. I saw it firsthand. Somehow they'll go to any length to rescue you. You can come willingly, but we'll fight you if it comes to it. We'll fight you to protect their bond. Yes. We did have a bond, and that's exactly why I cut them off. I have different bonds now. The bond of hatred between my older brother and me. Personal ties cause confusion. Personal memories only make you weak. Naruto remembers his fight against Sasuke in the Valley of the End. He then finally says, Why Sasuke? Why didn't you just kill me back then? Why didn't you sever the bond there? Or maybe you can't. Maybe you're afraid. Sasuke sighs. There's a simple explanation. It's not that I didn't sever the bond between us. I did. But I would not do what that bastard told me to. Sasuke remembers Itachi telling him to kill his best friend. He then says, Go away, all of you, before I lose my patience. As if I would just leave after three years of training to get here. Training, huh? That reminds me. Isn't your dream to become the Hokage Naruto? Instead of wasting all that time chasing me, you should be training instead, don't you think? If someone can't even rescue their friend, then they don't deserve to become Hokage. Don't you think, Sasuke? Sasuke appears next to Naruto, holding his shoulder. All members of Team 7 did not perceive Sasuke moving there. Hinata thinks, I can't believe how fast he is. I couldn't track him at all. Sasuke says, Bold of you to assume I need rescuing. Naruto looks at Sasuke and says, my words remain the same, just like last time. I'll bring you back, even if I have to break every single bone in your body. And just like last time, you will lose. You said you trained for three years? Let's put that to the test. Sasuke activates his showering gun, looking at Naruto. Naruto gets crushed by the summits of two mountains, one coming out of the ground, the other one coming out of the sky. He can no longer see his allies and the landscape changed completely. Sasuke has also vanished. Naruto can't move. He feels insane pain on his back 
back in his chest as he thinks, This Genjutsu, it isn't like the one Itachi used against me. Naruto tries to clap his hands together to use Jiraiya's technique to break out of Genjutsu, but it's useless. He cannot move whatsoever. Naruto is completely at Sasuke's mercy. I'll just take care of the distractions first. Hinata sees Naruto getting caught in a Genjutsu and rushes towards Naruto and Sasuke intending on breaking him out. Sasuke appears in front of Hinata and punches her face. Hinata uses her chakra to form a barrier blocking the punch and Sasuke says, I have to say it's not everyone that can see my attacks. Sasuke weaves and signs with a single hand. Chidori stream. His entire body erupts in lightning. Hinata begins a rotation but Sasuke holds her elbow shocking her and stopping the rotation from taking place. Too slow. Sakura begins weaving hand signs. Hinata is being shocked by Sasuke's Chidori stream. She attacks Sasuke with a gentle fist, powering through the pain, but Sasuke casually dodges it and kicks Hinata's legs with the back of his heel. She loses balance and falls down. Before Hinata hits the ground, Sasuke casually kicks her down the middle like a soccer ball sending her flying off. She hits the wall of the crater. Sakura says, Genjutsu! Drowning paralysis! Sasuke's head is surrounded by an orb of water. He can't breathe or even move. Sasuke looks at Sakura with his Sharingan and suddenly Sakura is drowning in an orb of water and unable to move. Sasuke says, Really, Sakura? You should have known a Genjutsu of that level wouldn't work against me. Sasuke used the Sharingan Genjutsu reversal on Sakura. Both Naruto and Sakura are under paralysis Genjutsus now. Naruto is still getting crushed by two mountains, unable to move. He hears a voice in his head. Come on, Naruto. Use my chakra. He's too strong for you. You need me. Naruto thinks back at the Nine Tails. Shut up, you slimy fox. I'll break out of this by myself. Yamato who took a little longer to react due to the wounds he sustained by the fire style, sees his team getting bodied in a split second and thinks, if I want to defeat this guy, I'll have to go all out. He weaves hand signs. Wood style. Wood clone. He forms four wood clones that come out of his body. He weaves hand signs again. Wood style. Deep forest emergence. Enormous wood tentacles erupt out of the ground, rushing at Sasuke with the wood clones wielding kunais. Sasuke looks at them coming straight towards his direction. His expression remains as cool as ever. He weaves hand signs with a single hand and forms a Chidori on his left hand. Sasuke dashes at the incoming massive wood tentacles and Yamato's clones. Sasuke then blitzes the four clones. He appears to be only a blur of blue light as he cuts the clones in half and they explode in wood, the Chidori completely destroying them. As the wood tentacles approach Sasuke, he slices them with his Chidori with with blinding speed, cutting through dozens of massive wood tentacles in succession as they attempt to strike at him. Sasuke cuts all of them eventually and appears in front of the real Yamato. Yamato pulls a kunai, trying to defend himself. With his left hand, Chidori still activated, Sasuke unsheathes his sword. It immediately gets laced by lightning and Sasuke swings it at Yamato. The sword cuts cleanly through Yamato's kunai, pierces through Yamato's clavicle region and exits through his back. Yamato drops to the ground and Sasuke keeps the sword in, shocking Yamato. Sasuke says, that defense was not the right one. Yamato thinks, my body's getting numb. I have to form hand seals quickly before I'm unable to move everything. As Yamato motions to make hand signs, Sasuke increases the intensity of the lightning style lacing his sword, shocking Yamato with a wave of blue electricity. Yamato screams in pain. Sasuke says, Konoha must be really struggling if they made you a captain. Sakura, still drowning in her own genjutsu, sees Yamato screaming in pain. She begins to lose consciousness, the world fading to black. In her mind's eye, Sakura's inner self avatar manifests and says, Sakura, there's no time for you to pass out. Come on, we gotta bring Sasuke back no matter what. The avatar punches Sakura in the head, breaking her out of the genjutsu, Sakura is no longer drowning. She looks at Sasuke blasting Yamato with lightning, his face calm and unperturbed. Sakura then dashes towards Sasuke thinking, it's now or never. If genjutsu doesn't work, good old taijutsu will. Sakura aims a punch at 
Sasuke and he easily dodges it. But Sakura forces him to pull his sword, which stops him from shocking Yamato, who's barely conscious at this point. Sasuke pulls back. Sakura aims another punch. Sasuke dodges it again. She then proceeds with a barrage of taijutsu attacks. Her blows hit the walls and the ground, breaking them and causing a lot of destruction. Sasuke dodges them all easily. However, he does absolutely nothing to counterattack. Sakura says, Sasuke, listen to me. You have to come back. Orochimaru's evil. He'll take her body. She keeps on aiming blows at Sasuke, who keeps dodging as well. Sasuke says, Itachi is far worse than him. Orochimaru is the lesser of two evils, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes, Sakura. You wouldn't understand. You never will. Tears begin to flow out of Sakura's eyes as she keeps on missing attacks. She says, Why won't you attack me back? You think I'm useless? Not even worth your time? Sasuke remains silent. Sakura keeps on missing attacks and says, Sasuke, I love you. Please come back. All of those feelings are dead. Forget about me. There's never been any reason for you to like me in the first place. No, you're a good person. Sakura remembers Sasuke offering Naruto his food during the bell test. You've always protected your friends. Sakura remembers Sasuke backhand punching Kiba after he insulted Naruto. You're kind. Sakura remembers when Sasuke told Sakura to have more confidence in herself in the country of crystals. And you taught me to be a better person. Sakura remembers when Sasuke scolded Sakura for saying that Naruto was no good because he had no parents. Sakura looks at Sasuke still trying to punch him and Sasuke dodges everything. Please Sasuke, come back to the person you were before. Sasuke's eyes twitch ever so slightly. That person is dead. The only thing that remains is revenge. Sakura cries even more, trying to punch Sasuke. Sakura moves forward with a sequence of attacks as Sasuke moves backwards, looking at Sakura. Hinata appears behind Sasuke, taking a stance. 16 trigrams, 128 palms. Hinata unleashes a ferocious flurry of blows, hitting Sasuke from behind hundreds of times. She ends her combo and sends Sasuke flying as he hits the wall of the hideout crater face first. Hinata looks at Sasuke, lying there unconscious, and says, Now he'll only be able to use his chakra in a couple of days. We have to get out of here quickly before reinforcements show up. Hinata hears a voice saying, Is that so? She looks behind herself and sees Sasuke, standing there casually. I think you should worry more about me. Hinata looks at Sasuke's body that she just tossed against the wall. The body turns into Sakura's body. Hinata realizes Sasuke casts a genjutsu on her, making she think she used the 128 palms on Sasuke, but instead she targeted Sakura. Hinata says, When? Before I kicked you, I placed a subtle genjutsu on you again. I didn't expect you to fall for the same thing twice. You overestimate the power of your eyes. They are nothing if compared to mine. Hinata rotates and advances at Sasuke. Sasuke weaves hand signs with a single hand, creating a Chidori. The Chidori impacts Hinata's rotation, sending a wave of chakra and lightning across the landscape. Hinata keeps the rotation going as fast as she can. It isn't enough, though. Sasuke's Chidori overpowers it. As the collision point between the Chidori and the rotation explodes, the lightning style and Hinata's chakra create a shockwave that ripples and cracks the ground of the walls. Hinata is sent flying with absurd speed. She impacts the wall of the crater and falls to the ground. Surprisingly, she isn't unconscious. She tries to get up again, but fails and falls back to the ground, too hurt to move. Sasuke looks at her. He then looks at Sakura, who was completely taken out of commission by Hinata's gentle fist. And then Sasuke looks at Yamato, who's barely conscious after that stream of lightning on his body. Sasuke then looks at Naruto, whose face is still wincing in pain from the anguish of the genjutsu he is still under. Naruto is being crushed by the mountains. Everything he attempted to break out of the genjutsu did not work. He didn't know he could feel this much pain. He hears the demonic voice of the Nine Tails once again. Use my chakra. 
It is the only way. He responds, I told you to shut up already! The mountains vanish. Naruto begins to fall down in a dark sky towards nothingness. He simply falls at a great speed, not seeing anything, and yet Naruto has a familiar sensation as though he is in a dream about to wake up with that falling sensation, but unable to do so. Naruto thinks, damn it, he's playing tricks on me. Naruto claps his hands together, trying once more to break out of the genjutsu by itself. The chakra Naruto releases doesn't break him out, but the landscape around him changes. Instead of complete darkness, Naruto sees clouds beneath him and the sun setting in the distance. As he continues to fall, he passes through the clouds and sees it from above. The leaf village. The wind makes his eyes water and sends chills down his spine as he continues to plummet towards the village. He looks at the Hokage statues. They are all defaced, just like he used to do years ago. Strangely, Tsunade's face isn't on the mountain. Only the first through fourth Hokages are there. Naruto impacts the ground in the middle of the leaf village. The fall was painful, but not as painful as being crushed by two mountains. Naruto stands up, and when he does so, he doesn't look like his current self anymore, but instead he looks like he is 7 years old. Naruto notices that and is creeped out by it. He thinks, why is Sasuke doing this? What's his game? Naruto begins to walk around the leaf village. It resembles the actual leaf village a lot, but Naruto notices some inconsistencies. Also, there are some simple details that are missing such as signs and a couple of buildings, and the overall environment just seems a little bit off. Naruto keeps on walking and he doesn't see absolutely anyone for quite a while. He starts to scream then. Sasuke! Why are you doing this? I know you're behind it! Kid Naruto claps his hands together again, trying once more to break out of the genjutsu. As he expels his chakra, it seems like the shapes of the buildings, plants, and the sidewalk around him get more abstract. Something then hits Naruto in the back of his head. He falls to his knees. Naruto looks back and sees a villager who just threw a rock at him. The villager says, Get out of our village, you demon! Another rock hits Naruto in the face, as another villager appears to Naruto's side, saying, No one needs you here, you are a monster that kills for fun, get out! Another rock hits him, and another villager appears and says, You killed the fourth Hokage, the genius of our village! Someone then kicks Naruto's back. It's a random leaf ninja. He says, He gave his life to save yours, and you're this worthless scum that killed our people. Naruto says, no, I'll be Hokage and I'll prove you all wrong. You'll see, I'll be the most powerful ninja ever! A crowd of villagers and random ninjas now surround Naruto appearing out of nowhere. They all laugh maniacally at what Naruto just said. A villager says, as if we would ever let someone like you be the Hokage. You've killed countless of our people, Ninetales. A random ninja says, I hope the Akatsuki takes you. It would be the best thing to happen in our village in a long time. Naruto screams, I am not! The Nine Tails! I am Naruto Uzumaki! and I will be the Hokage whether you like it or not! They all begin to scream at Naruto and throw more rocks. All at the same time, Naruto gets hit by several rocks as he lies on the ground defenseless. Naruto starts to cry. Rocks upon rocks hit him and he says, Why? Why do you do this? I didn't kill anyone! One of the ninjas says, Yes you have, yes you have. You say you're not a killer but you beheaded a man and you killed hundreds with the fourth Hokage as well. Naruto hears a voice coming from within him. They are right. You are a killer, Naruto. Embrace yourself. Give in. I can show them what you really are. They want the monster. They will have one. Destroy them. Rip them to pieces. And once you're done, Laugh at their disgrace. Laugh at their beloved ones crying for their deaths. Naruto still being pelted by rocks non-stop, already bleeding all over, says to the Nine Tails, Shut up! I am not you, and I will not use you to hurt them. The Nine Tails says, So weak, just like your father. 
Naruto says, Shut your mouth, you filthy fox! The Nine Tails says, You will always be alone. No one will ever love you. I'll be the only one you'll ever have, Naruto. Deep down, you know you'll never be happy. Surrender yourself. Naruto closes his eyes, trying to ignore the countless rocks being thrown at him. He thinks about Iruka, Kakashi, Jiraiya, Sakura, Hinata, Shikamaru, Kuru Tsuchi, Rock Lee, Neji, Choji, Tenten, Ino, Shino, Kiba, Gai Sensei, Hiruzen. He then thinks about Sasuke. In his mind's eye, Naruto sees Sasuke in the Valley of the End, leaving the Leaf Village for Orochimaru. Naruto centers himself. He ignores the countless people insulting him and throwing rocks at him, and once again he claps his hands together, expelling chakra from his body. The chakra knocks down the crowd of people surrounding him. Naruto's form goes back to his actual normal self. He's no longer seven years old. He looks around and sees the villagers who are throwing rocks. They are all on the ground, moaning in pain. Naruto locks eyes with one of the villagers. The villager says, go ahead Ninetales, strike me down. Kill me! Take your revenge! It's only fair, isn't it? We sought your death, and now you'll get your revenge! I would rather die than have you as a Hokage anyway! Anger overtakes Naruto. He pulls a kunai and dashes towards that villager, preparing to strike him down. The villager smiles as he is about to get killed. Naruto stops himself at the last second, the kunai almost touching the villager's chest. Naruto breathes heavily, Anger still showing in his face. The villager says, Why don't you take your revenge? Strike me down! Do it! Naruto doesn't move. The villager says, Come on! Don't you hate me? Don't you hate us? Naruto takes a while to answer, but he says, I do. I hate you, but I am not going to kill you. It's not right. You hate me because I am the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails, and I hate you because you hate me. If I strike you down in hatred, your family will take upon themselves to get revenge against me, and this perpetual cycle of hatred will never end. Naruto remembers Jiraiya's words. Someone has to eventually stop this cycle. Why not you? Naruto says, I will stop this cycle no matter what. I will bear your hatred and I won't take revenge. It only consumes you and it does nothing to make things better. It will simply leave you empty, right, Sasuke? Naruto hears Sasuke's voice as though it is omnipresent around this abstract leaf village saying, so idealistic so naive. He then sees Sasuke standing on his father's stone head on the side of the mountain overlooking the village. Naruto says, Sasuke, what I said is true. Revenge will do nothing good for you. It will just leave a hole in your heart. I no longer care about my heart. Besides, do you really think someone like Itachi should be alive? No, but there are other ways to deal with him. You don't have to do it alone. We can help you. No. This is my revenge. You put me under this genjutsu so you could see if I would take revenge on those I hate, right? I showed you that there's a better way. Please, Sasuke, stop this! You just showed me that you are weak and wrong, Naruto. And all that cycle of hatred nonsense doesn't apply to me. When I kill Itachi, his family won't come after me for revenge, no. They will be avenged. And you say that you will bear their hatred, Naruto? Really? What do you know about bearing hatred? I bear the hatred of my entire bloodline, and I will use it to destroy my bastard brother. End of story. This discussion will lead us nowhere. Naruto says, You're right! He claps his hands together one more time, blasting even more chakra out of his body. He concentrates like never before. He felt like his previous attempts were able to somewhat disrupt the genjutsu, and now he thinks he got the hang of it. Naruto doesn't let up. He keeps on pumping chakra out, until finally, with great effort, the genjutsu is broken. Naruto returns to the crater in the middle of Orochimaru's hideout. The first thing he sees is Sasuke looking at him with his Sharingan activated. He then sees with horror that his entire squad was thoroughly defeated while Sasuke seems completely unharmed. Sasuke then says, well then, 
Shall we begin? Naruto says, What did you do to them? I just took care of the distractions so they won't interfere. Don't worry, they're not dead. Naruto's expression shows fear, but also anger. He motions to punch Sasuke, but as soon as his fist is about to connect, Sasuke disappears. Naruto hears Sasuke's voice coming from above. You're so slow I could have breakfast before you throw a punch. Naruto thinks, How can he move that fast? How the hell is he that strong? And you will share the same fate as your squad. If you're so sad on defeating me, why didn't you finish me off when I was under your genjutsu? I told you before, I won't kill you. I won't do what that bastard told me to. Besides, you are helpless, so winning a fight like that wouldn't even feel earned. Earned? You think this is a game, Sasuke? You left the village for Orochimaru and you think we're just playing ninja? You are completely out of your depth, loser. For an instant, I thought fighting you again would be interesting, but now I see you're just too weak. Not worth my time. Sasuke motions to leave. Wait, Sasuke, don't you understand? Orochimaru will take your body and you will die. He's just using you. The only thing I care about is my revenge. Itachi is stronger than myself and Orochimaru, so maybe combining our bodies together will give me a better chance of killing him. I don't care if I die, so long as Itachi dies too. No, I cannot accept that. Naruto creates a shadow clone and begins forming a Rasengan. He jumps up, aiming the Rasengan at Sasuke. Naruto hits him and the Rasengan impacts Sasuke with force, sending him flying away, knocking Sasuke unconscious. Sasuke's body fades away and Naruto hears Sasuke's voice coming from behind him. They are both now outside of the crater. A word of advice? You shouldn't look into my eyes, you're so easy to put under genjutsu that it's pathetic. Naruto thinks, how the hell am I gonna beat him? Naruto hears a voice coming from within. Use my chakra, I will handle him for you. Naruto ignores the nine tails. Sasuke says, you really are determined to fight me, huh? I have the feeling that if I just leave you be, you'll keep on coming back and being this nuisance. Fine. I'll give you a fight. Sasuke looks at Team Kakashi, all defeated in the crater below. He then says, Let's go somewhere emptier. Follow me. Naruto is tense. He doesn't like his chances, but he follows Sasuke nonetheless. Hinata sees Naruto and Sasuke going somewhere else with her Byakugan. She's the only other member of Team Kakashi that can somewhat move, but she is too wounded to go help. The only thing she can do is to administer first aid on Sakura and Yamato, even though she doesn't know healing ninjutsu. The bandages she uses to stop Yamato's bleeding and she also makes sure Sakura is in a proper resting position as she is unconscious. Hinata thinks, now I just have to believe in Naruto. Naruto and Sasuke arrive at a location nearby the hideout. It's empty and there isn't much vegetation. The location is surrounded by rock formations and mountains. Naruto and Sasuke stand 30 paces apart, facing each other. Naruto's fists are clenched in tense anticipation. Sasuke's expression is numb. Plast. Naruto says, Here then, so this is the place I'll beat you up? Taunting is such a childish tactic. You'll need to do more than that to beat me. Don't you worry, I have more. I've learned many jutsu since the last time we fought. Naruto motions to create shadow clones. Sasuke says, Wait. Naruto halts and Sasuke continues. I will only fight under the condition that this is our last fight. What do you mean? If you win this fight, I'll recognize that you are stronger than me and that leaving the leaf village was a mistake because you got more powerful even though I sought Orochimaru. If you win, I'll come back with you willingly. But if I win, you will admit that I made the right choice coming to Orochimaru and you will leave me alone and never come after me again. That is unacceptable. Naruto creates five shadow clones. Then I will pound you into submission until you accept it. The five clones rush Sasuke. Sasuke casually disposes of them. Naruto begins to weave hand signs. Sasuke looks at the hand signs with his Sharingan and weaves the same hand signs. However, with only one hand. Naruto and Sasuke say at the same time, Wind, wind style, style! Wind, wind dragon. dragon! A large wind dragon erupts out of Sasuke and Naruto's hands together. Both dragons collide 
collide, creating a shockwave of compressed air, nullifying each other. Naruto thinks, The same jutsu as mine? That damn Sharingan! Sasuke says, Tell me, Naruto, how long did you take to master that jutsu? A month? A year? It took me two seconds. That's the abyss separating us now. Naruto gets outraged. He rushes Sasuke with another Rasengan. As it is about to hit him, Sasuke simply holds Naruto's arm, completely stopping his motion. The Rasengan spins violently inches from Sasuke's face. Sasuke holds Naruto's arm more forcefully and then swings Naruto like a ragdoll, crashing him on the ground repeatedly and the Rasengan fades. Naruto tries to kick and punch Sasuke, but Sasuke simply blocks those attacks as he keeps on hitting Naruto on the ground, lifting him up and then hitting him again. Sasuke then kicks Naruto on the stomach and sends him flying off. Sasuke sees Naruto on the ground, hurt, trying to get up and says, Have you had enough? Naruto gets up. He notices his arm, several of his ribs and one of his legs are broken. The arm and the leg are completely twisted and mangled. He then hears a voice, You pathetic child. Look at what he did to you. <laughs> Naruto tries to hold the Nine Tails Chakra back, but his emotions are overflowing. He needs to bring Sasuke back, and yet he is powerless. His eyes turn red, and his whiskers get more pronounced. He then screams, Sasuke, if you think think I'll let Orochimaru have your body, you couldn't be more wrong! We see Naruto's arm and leg snapping back into place, healed by the QB chakra. I'll bring you back right now! And once we've returned, I'll make sure you'll have your revenge! But if you think I'll let my friend die just because you broke some of my bones, I think you don't know me very well. Sasuke says, it seems you didn't understand anything, stubborn as always. Naruto forms the Shadow Clone Seal, Multi Shadow Clone Jutsu, an army of 10,000 Naruto clones, all with red eyes and pronounced whiskers, appears surrounding Sasuke. He says, I see you can make more clones than last time, huh? Doesn't matter. 10,000 times zero is still zero. The clones dash at Sasuke. Sasuke attacks them back, beginning a flurry of extremely fast taijutsu, punching, kicking, elbowing, and dodging with elegance. Sasuke takes clones out left and right. He takes out a hundred clones, 200, 300, 500, a thousand with taijutsu alone. The original Naruto thinks, how is that even possible? As Sasuke takes out even more clones. They now begin rushing Sasuke with Rasengans and Sasuke dodges the Rasengans, landing counterattacks. The clones' raging red eyes are contrasted by Sasuke's calm red eyes. One of the clones aims a Rasengan at Sasuke, and Sasuke holds that clone's Rasengan hand, making him hit the Rasengan at another clone that was rushing Sasuke as well. About half of the Shadow Clone army is depleted. Naruto hasn't landed a single hit, and the only thing Sasuke used to do that was Taijutsu. Naruto thinks, if he's dodging all of my attacks. I just have to attack him from all sides at the same time. He's not dodging that. The clones disengage Sasuke but still surround him. Many clones then jump upwards creating that dome of clones around Sasuke blocking the sun. They all weave the same hand signs and scream wind style, wind bullet. Thousands of wind bullets are shot from Naruto's mouths towards Sasuke coming from all directions. Sasuke quickly begins weaving hand signs with both hands. However, However, his hands are still separate from each other. It appears Sasuke is weaving hand signs for two different jutsu simultaneously, one for each hand. Water style, water wall, earth style, earth wall. Sasuke spits water surrounding himself with it and he hits his hand on the ground, raising a small stone pyramid around himself that covers him from all sides. The water coats the stone pyramid, providing a double layered shield. The thousands of wind bullets coming from all directions impact the pyramid, exploding 
exploding with force and destroying it, shattering the rock and vaporizing the water. Naruto thinks he used the water wall to coat the stone so it would absorb the wind cell impact and then the stone would stop it. But I guess it didn't count on how many wind bullets I had, right Sasuke? Naruto realizes something alarming. He expected to see Sasuke defeated where the pyramid stood. However, he sees a hole on the ground. And it finally clicks what Sasuke just did, but a little too late. Sasuke erupts out of the ground outside of the Shadow Clone army, weaving one-handed hand signs and says, Lightning style. Chain lightning! An intense blue lightning bolt leaves Sasuke's hand, hitting one of the Naruto clones. The clone screams as the lightning envelops him and disappears. The lightning then splits into two bolts of lightning that leap to two other clones and the lightning strikes those clones, making them disappear as well. And then those two lightning bolts split into two each, meaning four lightning bolts that hit four more clones. And those four split again into eight, then 16, then 32, then 64. And this massive chain reaction ensues with lightning bolts splitting and hitting two more clones until the entire army of shadow clones is destroyed by the lightning style. The original Naruto also got hit by the lightning and he fell to the ground wincing in pain as the lightning enveloped him. He watches all of his clones getting destroyed and thinks, he used the wall as a distraction so I wouldn't notice he went underground. Those one-handed hand signs, the only person I've seen doing that before was Haku and he couldn't use two jutsus at the same time. Besides, Sasuke used every single nature transformation, and I only know one! Naruto hears, You're no match for him. You will die, pathetic boy. Surrender yourself. Naruto thinks back at the Nine Tails. Shut up and watch me! Sasuke looks at Naruto. They are about 100 paces from each other. And Sasuke says, Have you had enough now? I will never give up! Sasuke punches Naruto on the face, drawing blood. Naruto was completely blitzed by him. Naruto tries to counterattack with Taijutsu, but Sasuke blocks his attack without much effort and unleashes a nasty flurry of Taijutsu blows, hitting Naruto's face, stomach, and and chin several times, finishing it off with a roundhouse kick that sends Naruto flying off. Sasuke says, I told you I would pound you into submission. Naruto is a mess. His entire face is gushing out blood. He gets up and stares at Sasuke. Red chakra bubbles start to appear around Naruto's body. He begins to manifest the QB chakra cloak, unable to hold his emotions back any longer. The Nine Tail says, yeah. Yes, surrender yourself, unleash my power. Naruto screams, I will be the one pounding you, Sasuke. I'll break every single bone in your body if I have to. Sasuke sees the astral projection of the nine tails behind Naruto staring at him, just like he saw it in the Valley of the End. But this time, Sasuke seems completely unimpressed by it. Naruto manifests the first tail of the QB Chakra Cloak and dashes towards Sasuke with amazing speed. Sasuke weeps leaves a one-handed hand sign, fire style, fireball jutsu. He releases a massive fireball towards Naruto's direction, who remembers the last time Sasuke did that in the Valley of the End, and the fireball was useless against the QB Chakra Cloak. Naruto doesn't even try to dodge the fireball. The fireball impacts, but this time the force behind it is overwhelming. The fireball drags Naruto with the QB Chakra Cloak 100 meters and explodes with amazing force. Hinata has watched Watching the fight in the hideout crater with her Byakugan, she sees a column of smoke rising at a distance from where she is. Yamato stirs and says, What's happening? Hinata says, Naruto is fighting Sasuke. The Nine Tails chakra is coming out. Yamato says, We have to go there and contain it. This is not a bright idea, Captain. It took all three of us last time giving all our strength to suppress that chakra, and now we are all hurt. Sakura isn't even conscious. Besides, the Nine Tails chakra is the only chance we really have of defeating Sasuke at this point. When their fight ends, we should go there and take care of the winner, be it Sasuke or the Nine Tails. Yamato says, but what if Sasuke kills Naruto? I thought you didn't care about Naruto. Well, uh, his 
an important asset for the village. Hinata sighs. I don't think Sasuke will kill him. He could have killed us all, but decided not to. Naruto even more so. I get the feeling Sasuke is just testing his own strength against Naruto's. They've always been rivals after all. Yamato says, I wouldn't count on that. Besides, if the fourth tale comes out, Sasuke is the one who's going to die. Naruto is lying in the middle of a crater created by the fireball jutsu Sasuke just used. He was severely burned by it, but we see the Nine Tails chakra quickly healing from the burns. Sasuke says, that was not the right way to block that attack. The Nine Tails tells Naruto, more Naruto, you need more. Dark red chakra erupts from Naruto with much more intensity. The sheer power of the chakra begins to crack the ground and the rocks surrounding Naruto, and the QB chakra cloak manifests three tails. Naruto screams, the chakra almost taking over his consciousness. Sasuke looks at him and says, So this is what Rochimaru was talking about, huh? Naruto expands his chakra mental. The limbs of chakra extend towards Sasuke with that orange bubbly intensity. Sasuke weaves a one-handed hand sign. Chidori stream. Lightning erupts around Sasuke's body, this time much more intense than the one he used against Hinata. Sasuke doesn't move, he just waits. As the QB chakra reaches him, it is completely destroyed by the lightning style that envelops Sasuke's body. Naruto then tries to envelop Sasuke in an ocean of QB chakra, but the Chidori stream simply blasts it away, destroying the chakra in the process. Sasuke looks at Naruto Naruto and says, this old trick again? Is that all you've got, Naruto? The three tails Naruto looks at Sasuke and begins forming a Rasengan on his right hand without the assistance of a shadow clone, similar to the one he used in the Valley of the End, but three times larger. Sasuke says, another old trick. You should know this will not work on me. Sasuke weaves one-handed hand signs and forms Machidori. His left hand shines bright blue with a power of the lightning style. Naruto dashes towards Sasuke with his Rasengan, the ground cracking beneath him from the force of his steps. Sasuke moves to intercept with his Chidori. The two lock eyes as they get close, aiming their Chidori and Rasengan at each other. Naruto is pure anger. Sasuke is completely calm. He casually dodges the Rasengan and lands the Chidori on Naruto's chest, piercing through him. Sasuke's hand imbued with lightning emerges from Naruto's Naruto's back. The Rasengan fizzles out and Naruto spits a lot of blood. Sasuke yanks his hand out of Naruto with a quick motion and Naruto falls to the ground still engulfed by the Nine Tails Chakra Cloak with a gaping hole in his chest. Sasuke deactivates his Chidori. His left hand is completely drenched in blood. He then says, I didn't hit your heart so that chakra of yours should be able to heal your wound. We're done. Don't ever come after me again. Sasuke deactivates his Sharingan and begins to walk away, not looking back. Naruto, laying on the ground, spitting blood, looks at Sasuke. He cannot speak because of his wound. The pain he feels is unimaginable, but not the physical pain. The psychological pain as he sees his friend embracing a path of darkness and leaving him again. Naruto spits more blood and he begins to cry. He tries to yell at Sasuke, but he cannot muster the words. It's too much blood coming out of his mouth. Naruto hears, So weak, so pathetic. <laughs> I should just let you die and be free of you. Naruto says, No, give me your power. If it is to bring him back, I'll surrender to you. The Nine Tails laughs maniacally within Naruto's consciousness. He sees the Nine Tails' gargantuan hands grabbing Naruto's small body and crushing him as it says, What would you be without me, boy? Sasuke is sent flying and crashes to the ground as a massive explosion comes out of Naruto's direction. The shock wave creates a crater twice as large as the one the Four Tails made fighting Orochimaru. Sasuke quickly gets up and activates his Sharingan again. Hinata and Yamato feel the shock wave within the hideout crater. The ripple of force cracks the ground and the walls around them. Sakura begins to stir. From their position, they see a thick column 
palm of dark red chakra rising to the sky. Hinata is watching with her Byakugan and she says, This is beyond bad. Yamato says, Did the fourth tail appear? No, the fifth did. Sasuke watches Naruto being completely taken over by the nine tails chakra. His version 2 4 manifests five tails. For the first time, we see Sasuke showing signs of apprehension during this encounter. He thinks the intensity of this chakra is orders of magnitude beyond the chakra from before. Sasuke smiles and says, So I can finally take you seriously then, huh? He weaves one handed hand signs, fire style, fireball bombardment. He spits a barrage of massive fireballs that fly towards the nine tails. They impact and cause a quick succession of large fiery explosions. Sasuke doesn't let up and keeps on shooting the fireballs like a machine gun. The nine tails dashes towards Sasuke with such force that it creates a small crater around the section of ground it used to propel itself. It moves forward with insane speed. Sasuke keeps on shooting fireballs. They impact the nine tails head on, exploding with force, but they don't do anything to slow down the nine tails. It reaches Sasuke and it swings its arm from above. Sasuke manages to dodge, jumping away, but the arm impacts the ground, creating another massive crater and a rippling shockwave. Hinata sees the hideout hallways connected to the hideout crater beginning to collapse. She looks at Yamato and says, we have to get as far away from this fight as we can or we're going to die. Yamato grabs Sakura and says, I cannot argue with that. They jump away, going as far away as they can from the fight. Sasuke continues to barely dodge the Nine Tails as advances. Each time the Nine Tails misses, it creates a new crater and shockwave. The landscape is beginning to radically change. Massive craters are being formed left and right. Mountains and hills are being pulverized as the Nine Tails keeps on striking. Sasuke thinks he's much faster than before. For, and if one of those attacks hits me, it will be a problem. He uses his Sharingan to track the Nine Tails' movements, keeping on dodging them. Sasuke thinks his moves are very difficult to read, even for me, but I think I'm beginning to understand the pattern. Sasuke weaves one-handed hand signs with both hands. Earth style! Mud wall! A tall stone wall erupts from the ground. The nine tails breaks through it as though it was made out of paper and slashes at Sasuke who was standing behind it, cutting Sasuke in half. Sasuke's two halves erupt in fire and we see Sasuke in the sky, 50 meters above the nine tails. He thinks, so my fire clone distraction worked. The mud wall hid the fact that I created a clone and jumped up. It seems he's not as intelligent in that state. It's as though his mind is completely blank, overtaken by fury. Sasuke weaves one-handed hand signs mid-air, lightning style, lightning dragon, an oriental style dragon made out of blue lightning erupts out of Sasuke's hand while he is still in the air and dashes down towards the nine tails. It impacts the beast creating an explosion of blue lightning but it doesn't seem to cause too much damage. Sasuke lands behind the nine tails weaving one-handed hand signs once again, fires style. Primordial raising stream! Sasuke shoots a thick continuous beam of fire from his mouth at the nine tails who is still shimmering with lightning. The tails of the nine tails block the beam that came from behind and the fire ripples hitting areas all around the nine tails causing secondary explosions and a lot of fire. Sasuke doesn't stop the beam forcing the nine tails to keep blocking it. We see the tails taking the fire damage and the chakra begins begins to fizzle a little bit. The beam of fire is so hot that it causes the ground underneath it to ignite even though it's not in direct contact, creating a literal line of fire between Sasuke and the Nine Tails. The Nine Tails, still blocking the fire beam, sticks its hands on the ground. A few seconds later, dozens of red chakra hands erupt out of the ground around Sasuke. He saw them coming with his Sharingan and weaved hand signs, initiating the Chidori stream, coating his entire 
their body with lightning. However, the lightning does not destroy the chakra like it did before. Sasuke is forced to jump away, stopping his fire beam. One of the massive hands hits a glancing blow on Sasuke's right shoulder. Sasuke winces in pain, drawing his katana and lacing it with lightning. He thinks, these chakra limbs are much denser than before. I'll have to slice through them. The dozens of chakra hands all attack him at once. Sasuke dodges and jumps out of the way as they impact the ground, causing immense shockwaves as well. Sasuke then cuts with his sword laced with lightning one by one. The huge chakra limbs fall to the ground, still shivering with the power of the chakra. The last two remaining limbs though surround Sasuke and expand. The chakra engulfs Sasuke completely. The nine tails pumps even more chakra into those two remaining arms as they thicken, attempting to crush Sasuke as his fear of demonic chakra envelops him. Sasuke sheathes his katana. He then weaves one-handed hand signs with both hands. However, both hand signs weaved by each hand are the same. Sasuke says, Dual Chidori. Both of his hands erupt in lightning, forming a Chidori each. He hits the chakra walls with both Chidoris, piercing through them and escaping. The Nine Tails appears next to him, slashing at Sasuke. Sasuke is able to react at the last second, moving out of the way, but he takes another glancing blow, this time to his side, burning him and drawing blood. Sasuke lands close to the Nine Tails, both Chidoris still activated. The Nine Tails motions to strike Sasuke again. Sasuke looks at the Nine Tails with his showering gun, centering himself and motions to attack as well, both Chidoris in hand. They get close to each other and the Nine Tails throws its claw attack. Sasuke dodges it, using all of his showering gun prowess to do so. The claw gets so close to Sasuke that it singes some of his hair. Sasuke aims his right hand Chidori at the Nine Tails' chest, however, one of the tails gets in the way. The Chidori cuts through the tail, but that buys the Nine Tails time to bring in one of its claws to attack Sasuke. Sasuke is then forced to move back. He thinks, damn it, my Chidori is slightly out of range. Sasuke, who's now escaped from both claws, is too far away from the Nine Tails to reach it with a Chidori. Now, a tail moves to strike. He won't be able to dodge that one, and his Chidori is still out of range. He then uses his left hand that still has a Chidori activated to draw his katana, lacing it with lightning immediately. Sasuke swings his sword, severing the tail that was about to strike him and lands a slashing attack to the Nine Tails' chest. The sword doesn't cut very deeply, however. When it slashes the chest, it cuts some of the chakra out, but not too deep. Sasuke uses that moment to disengage, jumping 50 paces away from the Nine Tails. We see the chakra tails that were cut growing back. Sasuke breathes deep and thinks, I see, the chakra surrounding his actual body is much denser and more powerful than the chakra of the additional appendages. My lightning sword's cutting power won't be enough. I'll have to use my Chidori, but I'll have to land one properly to end the fight. It won't be easy, and I am also starting to run dangerously low on chakra. The next combo will have to decide the fight. The Nine Tails and Sasuke then stare at each other. Sasuke weaves one handed hand sign and he summons a large shuriken. He begins to spin it and laces it with lightning. He then weaves one handed hand signs with both hands again, his free hand and the hand holding the shuriken at the same time. Lightning style, lightning dragon, fire style, fire dragon. A lightning dragon erupts from Sasuke's free hand and he spits a fire dragon from his mouth. Both oriental style dragons dash towards the nine tails, arcing towards the nine tails' his right side. Sasuke then tosses the lightning lace shuriken, arcing towards the nine tails' his left side. The lightning and fire dragons' his lengthy forms begin to swirl and spin around each other until they become a single unit. A long dragon made out of half blue lightning and half yellow flames. As both colors spin in a fluid and beautiful motion, Sasuke says, Dance of the Twin Dragons. They 
impact the nine tails' right side, and the nine tails raises its five tails to block it. While the lightning style lace shuriken impacts the left side, and the nine tails raises its arms to block it. The fire and lightning dragon attempt to burst through the tail shield, while the spinning lightning blue shuriken begins to carve through the chakra on the nine tails' arm. Sasuke appears from behind the nine tails and lands a Chidori on its unprotected back, sending a shockwave of lightning that erupts the ground around him. Sasuke's Chidori hand penetrates halfway into the nine tails' chakra hide, while its arms and tails are occupied protecting it from Sasuke's previous attacks. However, as Sasuke's hand begins to penetrate deeper into the nine tails, the chakra from the nine tails' hide begins to envelop Sasuke's hand, and then the arm burning him. Smoke begins to come out of his arm and he grunts in pain. Sasuke attempts to pull his Chidori arm off the Nine Tails, but the chakra enveloping it grabs Sasuke and doesn't let him go. A secondary QB chakra body then forms from the Nine Tails' back. Sasuke weaves one handed hand signs with his free hand, and the secondary body lands a direct hit on Sasuke, who is sent flying with absurd speed, kicking on the ground dozens of times until he crashes down, creating a crater upon impact, stopping almost a mile away from the Nine Tails. Dust and smoke rise from Sasuke's impact crater, and some time passes while the Nine Tails stares at it. Sasuke then steps out of the crater. He is partially transformed into his second curse mark state. Only one of his wings is out. There's a gaping hole in the wing, which he used to block the Nine Tails to strike. Sasuke is looking very rough from the impact. He thinks, yeah, if I hadn't used my wing, that would have probably killed me. And if I hadn't activated a Chidori stream at the last second on my left arm that was stuck in the chakra, it would have been ripped off. We see Sasuke's left arm, which he used the Chidori with. It is terribly burned. Sasuke smiles. He then raises his voice so it can reach the Nine Tails, who's pretty far away. You're the first one who forced me into the second stage in a real fight, Naruto. Well, since our last fight. Although, I don't even think that's you anymore. The Nine Tails stares at Sasuke. Orbs of blue and red chakra begin sprouting out of the Nine Tails. They begin to coalesce into a larger, darker chakra orb. Sasuke looks at that with his showering gun and thinks, this is bad news. That orb of chakra is insanely dense. Should I use that jutsu? No. It doesn't rotate like the Rasengan. Therefore, Sasuke's curse mark begins to spread more around his body, enveloping it completely. Sasuke's second wing sprouts out as well, and he enters a complete second stage of the curse mark, as the Nine Tails keeps on charging the Biju Dama. For the first time in the fight, Sasuke uses regular hand signs. He activates a Chidori. The Nine Tails swallows follows the dark orb of chakra. Sasuke's Chidori turns black and white and he says, Onyx Chidori. The Nine Tails spits the orb of destruction towards Sasuke's direction. Sasuke dashes toward the direction of the orb, using his legs and wings to propel himself with insane speed. The orb approaches, darting through the air with dense chakra, rippling with power. As the Bijudam is about to impact Sasuke, he strikes the orb with the Onyx Chidori, cutting it in half. Dark lightning oozing out of his hand. The Bijudama orb is severed in two half spheres and they pass by Sasuke, one to his right side, the other one to his left, and continue their path behind him. Sasuke keeps on moving forward, dashing towards the Nine Tails. As he gets close, the Nine Tails tries to strike at him with his claws, but Sasuke is faster now. He dodges the attack and lands the Onyx Chidori on the Nine Tails' chest. A massive shockwave wave of lightning erupts from Sasuke's hands, causing the lightning to leak around him and destroy the ground around the Nine Tails as well. Two massive explosions happen in the background as the two Bijudama half-spheres impact two mountains far off in the distance, leveling them instantly. Sasuke uses his wings to propel himself and the Nine Tails upwards into the sky. The Onyx Chidori still connected, dealing massive lightning damage at the 
nine tails. As they both rise into the air, a trail of dark lightning oozing from Sasuke's Chidori trails behind them. The nine tails roars in pain. Sasuke is in a state of total concentration. The nine tails then attempts to strike Sasuke again mid-air, but Sasuke disappears. He then reappears and hits the nine tails from the other side with his onyx Chidori. Sasuke disappears again with a blur of dark lightning and reappears, hitting the nine tails once again with the Chidori. He does that dozens of times, using the insane speed of the second stage of the curse mark to blitz the nine tails from all sides mid-air. Sasuke's trail of dark lightning forms a very intricate pattern as he hits the nine tails relentlessly from all sides, carving out large chunks of chakra out of the nine tails' chakra hide. Sasuke appears from above the nine tails and pumps even more curse mark chakra into his onyx Chidori. Watching from a distance, Sasuke appears to be a dark star in the sky, looming above the five tail cloak of the nine tails. Sasuke dashes down, impacting the nine tails with his Chidori. A rippling shockwave of dark lightning erupts in the air and Sasuke connects the Chidori as he dashes down with the nine tails whose body is completely engulfed by dark lightning. Sasuke cuts through the intricate dark lightning trail with his final Onyx Chidori strike as he descends and finally they impact the ground. The nine tail crashing first, still being pierced by the dark Chidori. As they hit the ground, a massive crater forms. From within the dust of the crater, we see this cinematic image of Sasuke standing tall, both curse mark wings wide open, as one of his feet is stepping on Naruto, who is laying on the ground, extremely wounded, the nine tails chakra fizzling out. Sasuke says, as per usual, I won. Yamato and Hinata are in a cave. Far away, from the direction Naruto and Sasuke are fighting, we see massive columns of smoke and dust rising in the air. Constant shockwaves and explosions come from there as well. Yamato shakes an unconscious Sakura, trying to wake her up as Hinata watches the fight using her Byakugan. Sakura stirs and finally opens her eyes. She says, Captain Yamato? Where's Sasuke? Yamato says, Sasuke and Naruto are fighting right now. Sakura quickly stands up. We have to go help Naruto. I'm afraid this is beyond our capabilities now. Besides, Hinata hit you accidentally with her gentle fist, so you won't be able to use her chakra for a while anyway. Sakura remembers Hinata unleashing a gentle fist barrage on her before she passed out. She deduces that Sasuke used a genjutsu on Hinata to make her think she was hitting Sasuke and she hit Sakura instead. Sakura says, Hinata, how's their fight going? Who's winning? Hinata says with a shocked expression, this fight is beyond belief. They are. Hinata then sees a half sphere of dense chakra flying with humongous speed, closing the distance very quickly to them and she screams, Captain, raise a barrier now. Yamato quickly weaves hand signs. Wood style. Wood shield. A thick wood shield rises, blocking the entrance of the cave. The half sphere Bijudama explodes near their location. The cave shakes and the wall cracks, pieces of rock falling everywhere. Yamato's wood shield gets heavily damaged by the shockwave, but it withstands the blow. Once the shockwave ceases, Yamato lowers the shield and Team Kakashi leaves the cave. Hinata continues to watch the fight with her Byakugan, but now all of them can see something. At a distance, what seems to be a dark star crashes to the ground with an explosion of dark lightning. Sakura says, was that Sasuke? Hinata says, yes, Naruto lost. I can't believe it. Yamato says, damn it, we have to get there fast before things get ugly. Team Kakashi, even though all of them are wounded, starts to run towards the direction of the fight as quickly as they can. Sakura says, Hinata, is Naruto alive? For now, apparently. Yamato says, yeah, we're too hurt to get there in time. Hinata says, I'm not as hurt as you are. I'll go ahead. Sakura says, wait, Hinata, it's too dangerous. Hinata ignores Sakura and begins to dash forward faster, leaving Yamato and Sakura behind. Sasuke stands tall, looking over Naruto. Sasuke's curse mark recedes and he turns back into his normal self. He sees Naruto extremely wounded. The Ninetales' chakra was used to heal the wounds he sustained from the Onyx Chidori Barrage.
garage, and now Naruto lays on the ground, his skin completely gone, burned by the Nine Tails chakra mantle. Sasuke falls to one knee, exhausted and hurt from the fight. Naruto stands up, not in the real world, but in the astral realm of the Nine Tails within him. He looks at the Nine Tails, who stands behind the bars of a massive cell. The Nine Tails says, We've lost. It's so sad that Sasuke will go away and die as that creep takes his body. There is an alternative, though. You could remove the seal. He wouldn't stand a chance. Naruto snaps. What's your game? Why do you want to take over me so much? Oh, Naruto. I just want to bring a friend back. I've been watching your struggle. All these years of training to get him back. You deserve to win. Remove the seal. Shut up. I'm not a gullible kid anymore. Once I release the seal, you kill everyone you see. Would that be so bad? Wouldn't it be a relief for you if I destroy the village and everyone who mistreats did you? I saw what they did to you your entire life. You touch the leaf village and I'll be the one killing you. The Nine Tails laughs hysterically. Come on, Naruto. You've come this far. You use so much of my power. Why not go all the way, boy? I was wrong. I shouldn't have surrendered to you. My friends could have gotten hurt. The Nine Tails screams and anger, and the Nine Tails' voice changes. Do you think you would have done any better against that Uchiha brat if you hadn't used my power, you imbecile? You are a weakling, and I am the only thing you have! Naruto laughs. Aha! So that's your real voice? That weird voice you used before was just you trying to sound intimidating, wasn't it? I think you broke character, Nine Tails. Naruto smiles sheepishly. The Nine Tails remains silent for a moment, and Naruto asks, Well, now as we're being frank with each other, other for the first time, tell me something. Why don't you just let me die when I get really hurt? As I understand, if the Jinchuriki dies, the tail beast doesn't die. It just takes some time for you to reappear somewhere in the world. Could it be that you actually care about me, Nine Tails? The Nine Tails screams, That's the most idiotic thing I've ever heard. I relish the thought of watching you die, you brat. But being severed and reassembled is painful. I'd rather just just take over your body. So you admit that you're trying to take over. I thought we were past that point, you imbecile. And I'm not trying to take over you. I will take over and then I will raise this world into ash. I will destroy everything for I am the most powerful being in existence. If you're so powerful, you would have beaten Sasuke. The Nine Tails screams all insults imaginable at Naruto and it's strikes the massive bars containing the Nine Tails in the seal. The Nine Tails then starts to send its chakra out of the cell and the orange bubbles coalesce into a large bubbly Nine Tails outside of the cell. Naruto says, I'm not taking your chakra anymore. I'm done with that. I've said it already. I'm not so sure you have a choice. Your body is so weak right now that you won't be able to resist. Naruto tenses up. If I envelop you with more of my chakra, the strain on your body will probably kill you. But as I said before, I relish the thought of watching you die. The bubbles of orange chakra surround and envelop Naruto who is unable to resist them. Sasuke sees Naruto's unconscious body beginning to leak Nine Tails chakra. Naruto opens his eyes. They are red and have slits for pupils. Sasuke looks into his eyes with his Sharingan. He then appears within Naruto's consciousness right in front of the bubbly chakra form of the Nine Tails. Naruto says, What? What are you doing here? How are you here? The Nine Tails says, So the Uchiha bread is paying us a visit. So this is the Nine Tails then. I expected more. As expected from an Uchiha, arrogant and full of himself, you 
bunch of bastards! You're lucky Naruto didn't have the balls to remove the seal because I would have ripped you apart into a thousand pieces! Well, this thing is certainly annoying. I don't know how you can live with it, Naruto. Well, you get used to it. Sasuke laughs and looks at the Nine Tails, saying, I have an idea as to why you hate us Uchiha so much. You used to be our little pet, didn't you? The Nine Tails' gaze is pure anger as its eyes meet Sasuke's showering on it says, Those ocular powers and that vile chakra you exude, you remind me of Madara Uchiha. So you knew Madara then? Yes. Doesn't sound like you were very good friends. Friends? I would have given everything I have to kill him, but the first Hokage robbed me of that. Everything you have, you have nothing. You're just a pathetic little caged dog. Sasuke pops the Nine Tails' bubbles. The Nine Tails chakra that was leaking from Naruto fades. Sasuke looks at Naruto, still inside his consciousness, and says, Do not come after me again. Sasuke, wait! Sasuke disappears from Naruto's consciousness. He then comes back back to the real world and sees Naruto passed out and in front of him, still very hurt, but no signs of Ninetales chakra. Sasuke hears a voice coming from behind. Why didn't you suppress the Ninetales' chakra from the beginning? Sasuke turns around and sees Orochimaru and Kabuto. He then says, because I didn't feel like it. Kabuto continues, your little fight destroyed the entire hideout, boy. These are not easy to make. As if I cared. Orochimaru says, Everything is fine, Kabuto. I would gladly trade a simple hideout for the Nine Tails Jinchuriki. We will set the Akatsuki back over a decade. <laughs> Orochimaru spits out the sword of Kusanagi, looking at Naruto with an evil smile on his face. He then steps close to Naruto, preparing a strike with his sword, and says in a mocking tone, it appears the amount of jutsus one knows is more important than the guts never to give up, Jiraiya. <laughs> Stop! They look up and see Hinata, her Byakugan activated, a battle stance ready. I won't let you kill Naruto! Kabuto laughs. Do you really think you can take on the three of us, you dumb little girl? Sasuke sighs and says, I told you never to come back, and yet you came back twice now. Orochimaru laughs. Pathetic child! Kabuto! Sasuke! Capture her alive! Hinata dashes forward. Orochimaru swings his sword, aiming for Naruto. Hinata goes as fast as she can, trying to reach Orochimaru before the blade strikes Naruto, but Kabuto gets on her way, activating his scalpels and engaging her in taijutsu. Hinata looks at the blade about to strike Naruto. Tears begin to form in her eyes as she realizes she won't have time to reach it, because Kabuto is on her way. He then hits Hinata to side with a scalpel because she got distracted watching the blade. Hinata winces in pain, still looking at Orochimaru, who's smiling as his sword is about to kill Naruto. Sasuke then holds Orochimaru's arm, stopping the sword a mere inch from Naruto's heart. Orochimaru looks at Sasuke and says, What's the matter, Sasuke? Feeling sentimental? Sasuke and Orochimaru both struggle. Sasuke holds his arm but but Orochimaru tries to force it down into Naruto. Their arms shake from the effort they both exert, but the sword is not moving. Hinata, very hurt, still engages Kabuto in Taijutsu. She is losing, unable to muster the best of her abilities because of her wound and lack of chakra. Sasuke looks at Orochimaru with a severe stare and says, You're not killing him. Why not? It will help with your revenge. It will ruin the Akatsuki's plans. Because there's only one man I will kill. Nonsense. You're still attached to this boy. You haven't severed the bond completely. I wouldn't have expected 
expected such weakness to come from you. They continue to struggle with the arm hold. Sasuke says, that's not it. Killing him is what Itachi wants me to do, and I am not doing that. Besides, if we let him live, maybe he'll be able to take out another Akatsuki member. Hinata blocks Kabuto's scalpels, but he uses a fainting attack to kick Hinata on the face and grabs her in a chokehold. She is completely out of chakra, having used everything during this long day of battles. Kabuto continues to choke her. Orochimaru and Sasuke are still struggling with the arm hold, and Orochimaru says, That is an interesting thought, but killing him is the safest bet. Move out of the way, Sasuke. I won't say it again. Sasuke says, I know you won't. He opens his eyes wide and his Sharingan spins, as Sasuke pumps an enormous amount of chakra into them. The flaring Uchiha chakra sends shivers down Rochimaru's spine, and when he looks at Sasuke's face, he remembers something. Something that once terrified him. He remembers Itachi Uchiha's face while looking at Sasuke. This evokes a primitive reaction of fear on Orochimaru and he pulls back. Orochimaru says, Very well then, let's see if this boy can kill another Akatsuki for us. Kabuto still choking Hinata says, But Lord Orochimaru, Enough Kabuto, hurry up with that girl. Orochimaru's mood seems to have severely worsened. Sasuke looks at Kabuto and says, One more thing. Let the girl go. Kabuto gets outraged. He thinks, Sasuke's getting way too reckless. He's been getting worse every day. And now that Lord Orochimaru's body is weakening, it's as though he doesn't even care how he addresses him anymore. Kabuto says, No! Lord Orochimaru said Sasuke lands a massive punch on Kabuto's face, blitzing him and shattering his glasses. Kabuto is sent flying a couple of meters, releasing Hinata from the chokehold as she falls prone and gasps for air. Kabuto spits three teeth and screams, You brat! You will! If you mutter another word, I will kill you. Kabuto feels sheer murderous intent emanating from Sasuke and freezes in place, completely quiet. Orochimaru looks angry and frustrated. He says, Let's go now. Sasuke, Orochimaru, and Kabuto motion to leave, but then they hear a voice saying, Sasuke, wait! Sakura and Yamato arrive. Sakura has tears in her eyes as she looks at Naruto's extremely wounded body and then at Sasuke. Hinata stands up and grabs Naruto, bringing him close to Sakura and Yamato. Orochimaru, Kabuto, and Sasuke stare at Yamato, Sakura, and Hinata. All six of them are very hurt and low on chakra. Sakura says, Please, Sasuke, look at what you did. Naruto is your friend, and these two are evil. Please think. Don't go with them. Come with us. Sasuke sighs and says, So annoying. Sasuke's Sharingan spins, and Sakura thinks, Genjutsu. Damn it. I don't have chakra to carry it. The Genjutsu illusion activates. Orochimaru, Kabuto, and Sasuke turn into fire and disappear. Team Kakashi is now alone, in the middle of a destroyed landscape. Yamato sits on the ground, panting, and says, Oh, that's a better result than I was expecting, really. Everyone is alive. Sakura cries tears of frustration and says, Damn it, damn it, damn it! I'm sorry, Naruto. I was just a burden again. Hinata says, Don't beat yourself up, Sakura. You did all you could. Besides, if I hadn't got caught in that genjutsu, I wouldn't have hit you with a gentle fist. It's my fault more than anyone else's. Yamato says, It doesn't matter whose fault it was. Sasuke simply outclassed us. But now, we have to find shelter. We are in no shape to do anything at the moment. Sakura can't use her chakra to heal us because of the gentle fist, and grass ninjas are bound to converge to this location after those monumental explosions, so let's get moving. Some time passes and Team Kakashi settles down in another cave. Naruto is still unconscious. Night falls and Team Kakashi remains quiet and contemplative. Yamato says, We'll have to wait here until Sakura is able to use her chakra again so she can heal us and we can go back to the leaf village. Hinata and Sakura keep on watching over Naruto, both looking very concerned. Yamato notices that and says, Don't worry, he'll be fine. 
fine. He's an Uzumaki and he has the Nine Tails' chakra. Wounds like that are not gonna kill him. Sakura says, he is still in pain. He shouldn't have gone through this. It's not fair. It's all because I'm weak and I couldn't help him. Just like before. Sakura remembers the first time Naruto went after Sasuke and she couldn't help him either. After some time, Naruto finally wakes up. He opens his eyes, wincing in pain. His skin still mostly missing. Sakura and Hinata look at him, relieved. Naruto remembers everything that happened and begins to cry as he processes the battle. Sakura cries as well. Naruto says, No, Sakura, you shouldn't cry. I was the weak one. I even gave in to the Nine Tails and I couldn't save him. Three years of non-stop training and I haven't caught up to him at all. And now Sasuke's gone. All because I'm worthless. I'm weak. Naruto and Sakura continue to cry. Sakura tries to be strong and says, Tears won't bring Sasuke back, Naruto. We'll just have to get stronger so that next time we don't fail again. Next time, we'll save him. We still have six months until Orochimaru takes his body. Yamato says, No. You didn't fail because you were weak. It's because Sasuke decided to abandon the village. Sakura says, Don't you say a word about Sasuke! I'm not trying to provoke you. I'm just telling the truth. It's Sasuke's fault. After seeing what you went through during this mission, I think I understood a bit of the bond you two share with him. But that doesn't change the fact that Sasuke doesn't seem to value your friendship. And if he doesn't do that, it's his loss. Sakura gets quiet and Yamato continues, when I was assigned to this mission, I thought you were just a bunch of stupid kids chasing after a criminal. I was mistaken. Don't get me wrong, you can be stupid, but I see why you won't give up on Sasuke. He's not like Orochimaru and Kabuto. He fought with honor and even saved Hinata. Truth is, he could have killed all of us and chose not to, even though it would have been easier. So if there is a silver lining to this mission, it's that he's not completely lost. Hinata says, That's true, I would be in Orochimaru's hands right now if not for Sasuke. Also, I can understand him. Naruto looks at Hinata and says, What do you mean? I can't cannot fathom what he's been through, Naruto. Revenge is a very logical conclusion. I see the merit in choosing to train under Orochimaru in order to defeat an even greater evil. It certainly seemed to have paid off. Sasuke is just 16 and probably stronger than any ninja in the Leaf Village right now. Naruto, still laying down and hurt, says, No, Hinata! He's going to die when Orochimaru takes his body! We can't let that happen! Besides, Orochimaru is evil too! You can't compromise with that type of thing! Once you live close to evil for long enough, you'll eventually stop seeing evil things as evil and become evil too! Or so Pervy Sage said, Sakura will rescue him within the next six months no matter what. I promise you that! Hinata looks at Naruto with a sad expression. Naruto, I don't want to discourage you, but his far too strong. There's no way you can catch up to him that fast. It's his bloodline. It simply gives him too many advantages. Naruto says, Bloodlines don't matter. What matters is having the guts never to give up, Hinata. Yamato laughs. Naruto says in anger, What are you laughing at? Nothing. It's just that you sound a lot like Lord Jiraiya. I admit, you are right, Naruto. Killing those three grass ninjas was the wrong thing to do. I'm glad you talked me out of that. Naruto looks confused but smiles and says, I'm glad you finally understand, but what the hell gave you that impression? The fact that we are not dead right now played a big factor in it. Because Sasuke chose not to kill us like we chose not to kill those grass ninjas. I never gave too much of a thought to the will of fire, but it really seems that it passes down from student to teacher. And apparently Sasuke still has that within him, and that's why. We're alive right now. Hinata says, You encountered grass ninjas? Naruto says, Yeah, when we were coming to rescue you, we ran into them. But we easily took care of them, and Sakura just put them under a genjutsu. They won't remember a thing, right, Sakura? Sakura nods. Hinata smiles and says, Oh, that's nice. Well, I'm sorry for my recklessness. I could have gotten you all killed getting captured like that on purpose. Naruto smiles and says, I actually thought that was really badass. Hinata blushes and quickly changes subject. Speaking of grass ninjas, I will quickly head outside and do some surveillance to make sure that there aren't any near us. I regained a bit of my chakra since we started to rest in this cave, so I can use my Byakugan for a while. Yamato says, yeah, that's a good idea. Hinata heads out of the cave. Naruto looks at Yamato and says, I'm sorry. 
I disobeyed your orders. I gave in to the Nine Tails, knowing full well I could have hurt all of you. I was just so frustrated and I was so caught up trying to make Sasuke not surrender his body to Orochimaru that I did the same thing to the Nine Tails. Yamato says, Well, at least now we know the extent of Sasuke's abilities, but you should really not use that power anymore. I know. A few minutes pass and Hinata comes back to the cave. She says, There's a squad of grass ninjas investigating the site of the battle. They don't seem to know we're here and I doubt they'll even find us. They'll just probably assume a meteor shower struck the land or something like that. Because this is really beyond the scope of what regular ninjas can do. Naruto looks at Hinata and says, It wasn't a ninja. It was the Nine Tails Demon Fox. That wasn't my strength. So next time, I'll make sure I'll be fighting him on my own terms. And I'll make sure I'll win. You may think I don't have a chance, Hinata, but I'll never give up. Sakura smiles and says, and when you do so, I'll be by your side. Hinata nods and says, so will I. Yamato sighs and says, so will I. A squad of six grass ninjas walks at night. One of the ninjas says, Captain Noritomu, what the hell are those craters? Noritomu, the captain of the squad, replies, no clue. We investigated for a good while, but your guess is as good as mine. We'll have to report that to the elders, though. I get the feeling they're gonna send in more sensory types to investigate. Even though I'm a Joan and that's not my speciality, you know. Another ninja says, It's a sign of the end of times. The Sage of Six Paths has finally returned, and he'll choose only the worthy to survive and live in the perfect world he'll create. Another ninja says, You believe that nonsense? It was just a meteor shower, or maybe some underground gas reserve that exploded. Another ninja says, Well, I think it was one of those tail beasts. They say they can destroy mountains just by weaving their tails. Another ninja says, Well, that's ridiculous. The land of grass doesn't have any tail beasts, you idiot. That ninja then opens his eyes wide, seeing something at a distance in the dark night. He says, Captain, what's that? As he points to it. The captain says, I don't know. Let's go check it out. When the squad of ninjas gets closer, they see the three bodies of the grass ninjas Team Kakashi fought laying on the ground. However, there's something different about them. Their necks have been slashed and they are dead. One of the ninjas rushes in close saying, they were my friends, someone killed them. The squad closes in and the captain says, all right, let's go look for whoever did this right now. As one of the grass ninjas kneels down to check the pulse of the dead ninjas, he notices that countless paper bombs were placed underneath the fallen ninja's vests. He yells, run. It's too late. The paper bombs explode and the fire engulfs the grass ninja squad. Three of the six were completely taken over by the explosion, killed instantly. The captain and two others were fast enough to jump away in time. A dozen shurikens are tossed towards the three surviving shinobis from behind. The only one who notices them in time to dodge was the captain. The other two are struck by the shurikens on the back of the head and neck, falling dead instantly. Captain Noritomu turns towards the direction from where the shurikens were tossed and screams, Who's there? A dark figure wearing dark robes and an oni mask with no slits emerges from the shadows and says, You seem unsettled. The captain scowls and screams, Now I am really pissed off. You chose the wrong day to cross Noritomu, the cudgel of the grass. He weaves one hand sign, Ninja Art. Outer Fury. The air surrounding Noritomu's body shakes, disturbed, as though it's surrounding fire. The Onimas figure pulls two kunais, dual wielding them. Noritomu rushes towards the figure. He is fast. He closes the distance in an instant and engages the Onimas figure in taijutsu. His strikes seem to be powered up with a chakra that faintly oozes out of his body. Noritomu and the Onimas figure have a fast, intense taijutsu exchange. Noritomu has the edge. He is able to avoid the kunai attacks by blocking the Onimas figure's arm and then throwing powerful punches and kicks that the Onimas figure is barely able to dodge and block. Noritomu then punches the Onimas figure right hand, sending one of the kunais flying away. The Onimas figure attempts to stab with his left hand, but Noritomu dodges and lands a knee strike to the Onimas figure's stomach, following it up with a spinning kick to the Onimas figure's side. We hear ribs cracking as he is sent flying. The 
Tony Mask figure grunts in pain and touches his side with his hand, falling to one knee. Noritomu rushes forward and jumps up, clasping his hands together and preparing an overhead double-handed strike. At the last second, the Oni Mask figure manages to jump away, spitting backwards and Noritomu punches the ground instead, opening a large hole on the rocky terrain, sending debris everywhere. The Oni Mask figure stands 30 paces from Noritomu, panting heavily. Noritomu's chakra stops oozing out of his body. He thinks, this guy is strong. He withstood the outer fury, which only gives me a short burst of power. I'll have to use the inner fury. But after that, my body gets sluggish. Well, it's all or nothing. Noritomu looks at the figure who seems to be having trouble breathing. He smirks and says, you seem unsettled. He weaves hand signs, ninja art, inner fury. Noritomu's eyes glow a bright blue and he once again dashes towards the Oni Mask figure. This time he is much faster. The figure tosses shurikens at him, but he easily dodges them and engages the Oni Mask figure in taijutsu again. As he throws brutal punches and kicks, his fists and feet glow bright blue as well. The Oni Mask figure is being overwhelmed by the taijutsu barrage. Noritomu lends a powerful punch to the figure's chest. The figure disengages and tosses a kunai with a paper bomb and begins to weave hand signs. Noritomu dodges the kunais as they explode behind him and he engages the Onimas figure again with more taijutsu strikes. The figure then says, electric current. His hands start to give off wisps of lightning and the figure manages to grab both of Noritomu's hands, shocking him. Noritomu winces in pain, unable to move his arms anymore. More. Still, Noritomu smiles. The Oni Mask figure then uses Noritomu's hand in conjunction with his own hand to form a hand sign. Noritomu gets pissed off. He can't move his arms because of the lightning is partially paralyzing his muscles. But we see Chakra gathering on his forehead. He then says, You should not have grabbed my arms, you freak. Noritomu headbutts the Oni Mask figure right on his head sending him flying away, kicking on the ground until he stops. Noritomu's forehead bleeds, but he smiles as he looks at the Oni Mask figure, struggling to stand up and getting on one knee, panting even more. The mask is heavily cracked, and we see wisps of chakra leaking out of the mask's cracks. Noritomu laughs, I'm gonna break that mask, and then I'm gonna pummel your stupid face until it pops. The Oni Mask figure says, That was a mistake. You shouldn't have hit the mask. His voice sounds weird now. It's as though two different people are speaking at the same time. The mask begins to crack even more. The Oni Mask figure pulls his hood up. Noritomu says, Oh yeah? How about I do it again then? He dashes towards the Oni Mask figure once more. As he gets close, the figure waves one hand sign pointing at Noritomu and Noritomu freezes in place. He doesn't understand what's happening, unable to move a muscle. Purple marks begin to manifest on his forehead and start to spread around his body. He thinks, is this paralysis jutsu? When did he do that? How the hell can it even overpower my inner fury? The Oni Mask figure says, I told you you shouldn't have hit the mask. It has a ceiling jutsu programmed in it. When I used your hands, your hands to weave, weave a hand sign, I activated it. When, when you touch, touch the, the mask, mask it unleashed the, the jutsu, jutsu on you. It's over. The mask cracks even more. Noritomu pleads in terror, have mercy, please. There, there is, is no, no mercy. mercy. The Oni mask shatters and falls to the ground. We can only see the Oni mask figure from behind, covered by his hood. The last thing Noritomu sees is the real face of the Oni mask figure as he is beheaded by a kunai strike. Team Kakashi sits back and waits in the same cave for two days until Sakura regains her ability to use chakra. During that time, Hinata makes constant checks with her Byakugan to see if any grass ninjas are nearby, but nothing really happens during that time. While she does that, the other members of Team Kakashi forage for water and food. Finally, Sakura's chakra returns and she heals all members of Team Kakashi, including herself. Sakura is shocked as to how wounded Hinata and Naruto 
Naruto War. They assure Sakura that they will be fine, and after they are healed and in a much better shape, they return to the Leaf Village. Team Kakashi presents itself at Tsunade's office, and Yamato reports the mission to the 5th Hokage. Tsunade seems concerned after hearing about Sasuke's strength and Naruto going berserk twice. Naruto says, We're not giving up, Granny Tsunade, and I swear I won't use the Nine Tails Chakra anymore. I'll get stronger on my terms. Tsunade smiles and says, I accept your words. In the bowels of the Leaf Village, the Oni masked figure kneels in front of Danzo. He has a new Oni mask, red, that also covers his entire face and has no slits for the eyes. The figure says, I made sure that the grass ninjas didn't interfere with Team Kakashi as you commended. Good. What of the Nine Tails? Naruto Uzumaki manifested five tails. It seems that when Naruto Uzumaki entered that state, neither him nor the Nine Tails had control over their actions. It was as though the Jinchuriki was simply moved by the hatred ingrained in the Nine Tails' chakra. Why didn't you stop the chakra? The Nine Tails' chakra was the only chance Team Kakashi had. It would have been unwise to let them at Orochimaru's mercy. Besides, Orochimaru really intended to kill Naruto. What about Orochimaru? How did he seem? His body seems weak. He will need to perform the transfer sooner rather than later. I see. However, neither him nor the Nine Tails' seal should be your greatest concern. What do you mean? Sasuke Uchiha. He has become far more powerful than anyone imagined. He defeated the Five Tails form of the Nine Tails, and he actively avoided killing anyone in Team Kakashi. However, a rogue ninja such as him cannot be trusted. Then he's become a problem just like his brother. If you ever have the opportunity to do so in the future, kill him. Very well, Lord Danzo. Should I keep on watching the Nine Tails? No. You'll hold that for a moment. I have a different assignment for you. My spies report troubling news coming from the East. It appears some odd chakra has emerged in the land of Whirlpools. The ruins of the Uzumaki clan? Precisely. Precisely. And the reports sound a lot like the scourge that killed Hashirama Senju. You are my most skillful subordinate. I need you to investigate that. We must act before the slug princess does anything idiotic. It will be done, Lord Danzo. Continue watching the rewriting Naruto series right here. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Come on, this was a three hour video. If you don't subscribe right now, I'm not sure if you're ever gonna do it, so please do. Like this video to support the series and the channel as well, and comment down below what you thought about, you know, this very long rewrite episode. Thank you so much for watching.